Last session, the three Fate Touched adventurers, Silvis, Denden, Den, and Rhiannon, made their way into Fandolin for some breakfast and to search for a way back into the Feywild. It was here that the party met a halfling waiter named Zadesh, who, after the party discovered the witch like carnival was in town, revealed that he was only covering for his twin brother, whose name was actually Zadesh. This halfling, who would come to who would come with the party to the carnival, is named Babru, and after a slip of the tongue, he would mistakenly reveal to the party, after some persuasion, that his brother and he was hired by a mysterious benefactor to make sure the party gets into the witch-like carnival without a hitch. This mysterious benefactor is named Eliwick Tumblestrom, and they would pay for the first round of tickets for the party. After entering the carnival, the party went around to see various attractions and meet more than a handful of interesting faces. They even made wishes on... They made wishes using the enchanted dandelions that were given to them during the welcome gifts hour. The party would head first to the Pixie Kingdom, where they would meet several interesting faces and would gain Pixie names. While on one of the attractions in the kingdom, the party would watch three thieves steal from several different fairgoers. Denden would try to track down one of these thieves, but would be unsuccessful in finding them. After a delightful experience at the Pixie Kingdom, the party made their way to the Hall of Illusions, where they witnessed a failed proposal between a halfling couple due to a, a mannequin of Tasha the Wizard that automatically cast Tasha's hideous laughter on passerbys. The halfling Babru would appear and would succumb to this effect before asking the party to help the halfling who was mistakenly rejected, as he is his, cousin's, his cousin Reuben, and he was out of tickets to go help him. After entering the tent of the Hall of Illusions, the party would encounter the mute clown Candlefoot, who also needed the party's help. As the party overheard elsewhere, a Kenku has stolen the clown's voice and has been using it to cause mischief around the carnival. More importantly to Candlefoot, the Kenku, uh, the Kenku Kettlesteam, has been using it to fool and be rude to his love, the mermaid at Silversong Lake. After agreeing to help, the trio decided to split up to track down various targets. Silvis is heading to the Bubble Pop uh, attraction to speak to Deanna Cloppington, who, according to some of Silvius's old pixie friends, knows a way back into the Feywild. But remember that Deanna Cloppington may look like a centaur, but she's not actually a centaur. Denden Den is heading to Silversong Lake to find Kettlesteam, the Kenku, in order to get Ke Candlefoot's foot voice back. Uh, Rhiannon is going into the Hall of Illusions to find the distraught halfling who tried to propose. With all of that, let's start this session. How's everyone doing? I'm so excited. Yeah. So, uh, we know what's up with that now. Uh, let's start with Silvis. Silvis, you don't have to go very far um, to get to your attraction. It's just kind of a, a, a kind of a curve around. Um, but I want you to roll a d8 for me. Silvis, you're muted. Ah. Can you can you roll a D eight for me, yes. please? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, a six. Uh, you got a six. Six. Okay. <clears throat> All right. With that, uh, as you're kind of making the bend around to get to the uh the bubble pop teapot, um. You watch as a giant dragonfly swoops overhead, uh, and its rider spills a drink over a group of witchlight hands. Um, you watch as this uh, this person kind of 
in in like kind of a a leather jacket uh like cloak situation and like a floppy wizard hat is like holding on to the rain uh with one hand and their hat with another but their drink has gone over their shoulder while trying to uh keep their hat on um the witch slide hands are not happy um you hear them like go to start cursing and yelling but notice that there's fair goers around so they kind of have to bite their tongue and walk away um the mood uh drops down by one Ooh. Ooh. all right interesting okay that was, yeah. that was a series and, of events yeah and as you kind of walk past this incident do you kind of notice that the the lights around you kind of dim ever so slightly? Ooh. Isn't okay. this like tempting me to make everyone cry here? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to know what happens if the mood is terrible. Uh, <laughs> no. I know. Well, there's a there's a way to find out. Uh, um, anyway, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but after that, you eventually uh, find yourself at the Bubble Pop teapot. A 20-foot-tall teapot rests on a wooden platform. It's painted surface whirling with moving imagery of flying dragons breathing steams of, streams of bubbles. A door at the base of the teapot allows entry to its interior. Those who emerge... Uh, those who enter emerge from the spout and close in a bubble that detaches to float across the carnival. Seven goblins sit around the platform, sipping tea from mist-matched porcelain cups. Um, as you approach uh, this kind of, like, like this assortment of goblins, um, the one closest to the door will notice your approach um uh and they're kind of sitting behind a table you you see that they have like a whole punch gun on their on their on the top of the table and he points to the sign with kind of this half smile that says uh the words that you intend to say try saying them in a different way different way what? what go ahead Betty try rhyming <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> what was the the person I'm looking for his name again <laughs> uh Diana Clappington <laughs> <laughs> they're they're asking you to drop a sick diss track right now. Yeah. yeah come on. Go ahead, do it. It's very difficult to do literally on the spot. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Um just end the next sentence with taunt. Who's gonna criticize your rhyming skills? They just wait, wait, wait. Try it. <laughs> hey, is it okay if I give a suggestion? Yeah, go for it. Okay. You could say something along the lines of, I'm not here just for fun. I'm looking for a clopping tongue. Ooh, damn. I don't even know if you're actually supposed to rhyme. That was just a joke. I don't know. Good job, Dizzy. <laughs> I assumed because the thing is rhyming. Right? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me, like. I'm, like, thinking. Uh, fuck. They're goblins. <laughs> they wouldn't know that. Uh. Are you not? I. No, no, I don't know. That's what I do! <laughs> <laughs> That's literally her job. I, 
I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is just I like, like to imagine Silva's just standing there struggling. That that is exactly what I'm picturing. The <laughs> goblin is just like like sipping tea, uh, looking at the fucking sweat, just like well. Uh, 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 <laughs> they're <laughs> I'm you. I want to continue watching this. <laughs> Um, Susie offered something. Take it. So, what, so what does the sign say exactly again? Uh, the sign says, "The word that you intend to say, try saying it in a different way." The word. Just like speak Spanish say. or something. Who's gonna? Yeah, like... I was gonna say I'm just gonna speak Elvish, Elfin. <laughs> like, cause, cause I'm covered. They wouldn't be able to see my ears. They, they don't know. Okay. Um, so I will ask in Elven, where is Diana? Uh, the goblin at the table kind of like they pause as they're bringing up their teacup and they take a sip and they put it down and they shake their head at you. Oh, man. That's just... You're gonna, you're gonna have I'm, to. I mean, you did not specify what different way. <laughs> uh, this is a fay. You remember, you got it. Yeah. If they want you to play their game, you got to play their game yeah. their way. <laughs> uh. Oh, you know what? How about this? The like. The goblin will kind of uh, put their cup down and kind of push it away for a moment and say, if you're looking for the horse, you're going to have to change your course. I'll punch your cricket and you can go out the spigot. And he points up to the the end of the spout of the teapot. Oh, nice <laughs> job, Carl. <laughs> hey, well, do, we, do we have tickets? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say... Okay, here's my ticket. And he'll go to punch it and stop and wait for you to say something clever. Oh, that's so weird. Like ticket. This whole, like, cogs are moving in my brain. <laughs> Well, are you going to be more explicit in your visit? Oh my god. If I, if I was Silvis, <laughs> I would have punched this guy right now. <laughs> uh, I will literally give you suggestions. I am... Help. <laughs> I want to like, call friends. You can friend. literally be like, here, here is my ticket. I hope that you pick it. Yeah. No. Doesn't have to be too, too crazy. The, the only thing that I, in my brain is like, okay, what rhymes with ticket? Well, lick it. Well, pick it. Does he just Crick say it? Uh, yeah. Spick it, kind of like he said. Well, they use spick it. Oh. Yeah, they did use spick it. Spick. Yeah, I can't use spick it. They already use spick it. This, this is isn't it. This isn't plagiarism 101, bro. Like, yeah, just try it. If they don't like it, just uh, let's use it. Fuck it. The spick it read. You know, the, little, the little end of the, the 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 teapot. Here's my ticket. Will you pick it? They're they're gonna smile and they're gonna punch your ticket. <laughs> oh, you just gotta do it, Silver. You just gotta do it. I can't do rhymes off the just off the top of my head like yeah, that. That's where you go. Um, uh, and oh, that be awful. before you walk in, uh, because you played their game. Uh, the goblin's going to reach under the table and grab a uh, little leather pouch and hand it to you. And uh, on a logo uh, on the front of this pouch uh, is Scatterleaf Tea. 
Um, make a history check for me. Okay. What is my history? Ooh, it's a plus five. Okay, which one is D20? Oh, that's right. That is a 19. 19. You would know uh, from various encounters with other uh, fey that Scatterleaf tea, uh, not only does it taste good, it has a, another use. Uh, as an action, a creature can scatter these leaves on the ground in a five foot radius, duplicating the effects of a protect from good and evil spell that lasts for 10 minutes. To gain the spell's protection, a creature must stand within the circle of the tea leaves. In addition, a cup of hot, delicious tea magically appears in the protected creature's hands. A pouch contains en enough leaves for one use. Ooh, wow. So I'm going Red. to send you this description. Okay. So that is and you can add it to your character sheet. Don't I have um that, like, pouch full of trinkets uh you do you know what how about i just slap yeah. it in there real quick because i want to hand them one back one of, one of my random little trinkets oh just like here you go buddy here you go friend uh do you, do you go to hand them something i i will take a trinket from the random trinket thing and and hand it to them. I don't remember where to roll that. <laughs> hmm. Wait, wasn't there something with Faye and gifts? I found it. Isn't there kind of fucky weird about it? Oh well. Hmm. Oh, it's not a gift? I'm seeing it nope. as a trade. Uh, nope. So, you you go to, like, hand them something from your jacket, and they're gonna put up a hand mm -hmm. and say, I don't want your trinket. Just take your ticket. Ah. Got it. I'll stick with it. They they will I... nod at that. You, you have earned this goblin's respect by playing their game. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, I'll, I'll head on in. All right. Uh, so, uh, when you walk into this uh, this teapot, you look around and you notice that the walls are kind of this, as you would expect, a kind of this ceramic white, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of like look around and you're just like well how does this work there's no one in here and then you feel this like waviness under your own feet uh give me an acrobatics check Ooh, which one's acrobatics uh that is the x <laughs> okay that is <coughs> Ten. Ten. Uh, you just barely remain on your feet as Ooh. the ground from under you starts to pull up. And you look down and you notice that you're no longer standing on the grass, but you're standing on the surface of this kind of clear, liquidy, iridescent bubble. And you look around you and you notice that you are now contained within a bubble. And this bubble kind of floats very gingerly through the teapot and out the uh, the spigot of, not the spigot. That that's what the goblet said. What's what's the, <laughs> what's the like? The snoot. Yeah, sure. The the snoot of the teapot. <laughs> um, and you float out, and you are now drifting above the um the carnival. You're just floating through. Nice. Uh, you can actually spot Den Den still making their way down and through uh, uh, Silver Song Lake. Um, you look around, you notice some 
more interesting people like people on stilts breathing fire you know like folks doing magic tricks um you you even like kind of look around um and you notice a staff area behind the the big top Ooh. and you kind of keep that to yourself as you float mm-hmm. you know th- this lasts all of like a, a couple minutes yeah, as good. the bubble slowly descends outside of the carousel and as soon as it hits the ground it goes Pah! Nice. and you are now standing on the grass outside of the carousel looking uh, towards it you notice a very particular looking lady. I will put what she looks like in the depictions chat. Gee, I wonder who this is going to be. You notice this lady. See, I can, I, I can rhyme unintentionally. It's just not <laughs> oh wow, she looks so cool. Very pretty. Yeah. God. Remember, she's not a centaur. Wow. Okay. She's With that, um, I'm going to be right back. Right back. Right back. I'm gonna see now. I'm rhyming it intentionally. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause the recording as I need to run and do something real quick. So, B or B. All right, we're back into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn up the music a little bit though. There we go. Ain't that okay. nice? Uh, all right. So. With that, let's move on to, let's see here, that's that. Uh, let's go to Den Den real quick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, cool. Den Den, while you're flying on over, are you flying over the big top or are you taking the path? I'm taking the path and I'm staying to the side. Okay. Uh, roll me a d8, please. All right. Hang on. I just gotta. I hang on. Wait. Hang on. Hanging on. Okay. Gripping on. on for dear life. The, oh God! Wow. You know this happened last session too, and I think it's not gonna stop. I, <laughs> I, I rolled a one. Oh, you rolled a one. Uh, I roll roll I... again for me, please. Oh. Okay. <laughs> wow. The pity of the DM. Um, I think Denden is doomed or something. No, you're I fine. I rolled a three. Oh, that's perfect. All right. Uh, so, oh, you, okay. as you're kind of floating, flying by, taking the path, trying not to run into anybody, uh, you hear a uh, a flute start playing, and you notice like down the path with people coming and going. You notice a a uh a satyr uh with red and white striped horns uh playing the uh the pipe and he's kind of like marching along with kind of this like happy expression and you kind of fly up to like see behind him and you see a procession of dancing rodents following behind him the fairy tale yeah And as this is happening, as you watch this, like, group of rodents kind of, like, dance around behind him, uh, you notice other people notice, and they start laughing and pointing, and, like, one per- like, a couple of the kids start trying to sing along with the flute. And, Mm -hmm. let's see here. Can I grab the thing, please? Am I allowed to grab the thing? I am. Uh... The mood, oh my god, mm-hmm. it's not moving. What the hell? Mm. Why isn't it moving? Your power, it has been taken. From it has you. been taken. Anyways, the mood increases by one. Um, then, then you watch as once again the lights around you, and if you look up, even the sky itself becomes a little brighter. Mm-hmm, 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 interesting. All right. Uh, you eventually kind of 
watches this parade of, of rodents and flute music uh, disappears into the crowd. And you continue your flight to Silver Song Lake. Um, let's find this real quick. Mist gathers at the banks of a shimmering lake. Near its center, a mermaid lounges in a giant bowl, singing a glorious haunting song that captivates spectators on the nearby lakeshore. In response, the lake water uh, coalesces into magical sculptures that whirl around her as she performs. Uh, let me grab her image, because she's got one too. Mm -hmm. So you guys can can get a good look at her. This is what she looks like. Oh, wow, this art really is beautiful. Yep. All right. Uh, so, while... Uh, so here's the thing, too. Um, as you're kind of walking... Or, walking right quotes <laughs> flying uh, over to like the other people watching her performance um you look around to see if there's like hey do i have to pay you know punch a ticket anything mm -hmm. no there's nothing uh all there is is a sign that says um uh uh plasha the mermaid point like with an arrow pointing at where you can see her perform her, her name's what Plasha. 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 Here, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. These fantasy people and their dang names. Yeah. I know it's it's spelled Palasha, but it, in the book it says Plasha. Plasha. Okay. Oh, okay. That's cute. All right. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's because it's supposed to be like Splash, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. Don't know. That's what I thought, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... So you, you kind of watch for a moment as she continues to sing this, like, very beautiful yet haunting song. And you watch as the water around her kind of takes shapes. Uh, like, it, it's, it's very pretty. And from the crowd, you hear, Sing a better song! Where I immediately have to see where that came from. Uh, give me a perception check. Oh boy. Hang on. <laughs> I need to find some leads where I need to also open this sheet again. Dang. Uh... Perception. <coughs> and. Come on. Oh. Five. You got a five? five? Huh? Yeah, five. Okay. Uh, you look around for a moment and you're just like, where the fuck did that come from? You can't mm -hmm. find out. Or That's you can't hard. you can't spot them. So a moment goes by. The the mermaid has yet to stop singing. They're they're kinda trying to ignore it. And somewhere else in the crowd you hear My granny can sing better than you. If I fly higher up, can I see them better? Uh, yes, you can. You want to do that instead of rolling another perception check? Y yeah, yeah. Okay, so you you fly up, and you now have a full spread of the crowd. Mm -hmm. And you kind of you you glance over to the mermaid who is now like very visibly distressed, oh. and. You hear. Just give up already. We're going somewhere else. Oh, can I? Hang on. I'm just going to yell. What an idiot. Her voice is so beautiful. This man could never compare. Uh, give me a straight charisma check. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> hang on. Where did I put? Yeah, sure. I'll just put this. That's a uh, 
that's a 13. A 13. You you start to like try to yell, but you're a very small fairy and you're very high up. <gasps> um Okay. So she doesn't hear you and in fact you watch as she um falters kind of mid song. She starts to cry a little bit and she leaps out of her bowl and she darts off heading down okay. the river. All right, did I see where the voice did come from? Yes, the, as soon as she darts off like down the river, um I didn't mean to move you. Um <laughs> you notice a kind of this like what seems to be like a teenaged human with kind of short blonde hair and kind of a a face of acne and kind of this like crooked nose get up with his hands in his pocket and walk out of a crowd who are very angry at him and mm -hmm. you watch once again as it gets darker around you as the mood drops by two. Oh, oh. well you know I was curious but not that curious okay I'm, I'm no excuse of... it Excuse me, it only drops by one. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm gonna follow them. Okay. Uh, you follow them as they kind of, uh, walk down towards, uh, let's see here, where are they going? They're making their way over to the feasting orchard. All right. Um, I'm gonna... Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you're following them down that path, you notice uh, Sil Silvis outside the carousel as well. Uh, I would wave, but I have to focus. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So, okay. Hang on. But somebody did. Am I just imagining this, or did someone tell us that the Kanku pretended to be human? Or turn human. Yes, the, the Kenku uses disguise self to pretend to be someone else. Mm. Alright. Um, okay, since Dunden, not me, obviously, is not very creative, um, she's simply gonna swoop right up to that totally teenage human boy and point her needle at his face. And uh, yeah. You you kind of dart in front of them and point their needle in their face, and the boy freezes and puts their hands up with kind of this yelp, uh, and goes, "Buzz off!" Who are you to tell me that? I don't know. You're the one sticking a needle in my face, little pixie. I am not a pixie. So anyway. what? What do you want? Shush! I'm talking. Why would you insult her? What is your... What is your deal, man? I don't have to tell you anything. Oh, well... You don't have to, but you might lose your eye. If that even is your real eye, Kenku. Uh, roll intimidation for me, with advantage, because you know that they're a Kenku. Oh, right, it works. I thought that may not even be them. <laughs> Alright, hang on. Ah, uh, right, that never works out well. Okay, where did I put the die this time? I think I'm losing dice. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been eating them. Oh. Damn it, dice eaters. Uh, yeah, as always, it's not going well. I rolled an eight. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun, the furious, <laughs> the courageous... Yeah, be not. I don't think I've what? rolled well a single time since we started this campaign. It's infuriating. <laughs> but that just adds to the character because that explains why she's so angry. Because I am. Oh. <laughs> you. You need you... to use different dice. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. You watch as they kind of like squint their eyes at you, and they're like, "How about I don't." And then you watch as, in a poof of feathers and smoke, they are gone. Ah! I fly high up. Can I spot them anywhere else? Give, give me a perception check with advantage. A 
pass as a chat. Yes, sorry. Listen, guys. <laughs> come on. Come on. Oh, come on! Okay, hang on. I'm just saying, oh, this dude back? is like actively trying to ruin this guy's relationship. Mm -hmm. Wait. Oh no. Ah, oh, that was my mistake. Oh my goodness. You said with huh? advantage earlier too, right? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, well, I'm an idiot. All right, okay. And this one's with advantage as well, right? Yes, because I'm I'm saying you're Thank using God. your height to your advantage, which oh, is not something you, I you get to say very often. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, hang on. Uh, what is the perception? Yeah. Yes. Perception. Oh, thank God. In total, that's a 21. Cool. You you dart up really quick, and you look around, and you notice a little crow, uh, Kenku. Let me see if I can freehand it. Uh, kind of, once again, runs into the feasting orchard and slides under this tent right here. Ah, I'm following at okay. the speed of lightning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you dart after them. You don't even have to run through the through the like hole, the the gate right there. You can just fly over the fence and you <laughs> dart under the tent. We shall come back to you. All right. Let me get rid of that. All right. Rhiannon. Yeah. In the Hall of Illusions. Okay. All right. Uh, tall mirrors line the inner walls of the tent. The mirrors near the entrance reflect onlookers in their youth. So as you're oh. kind of walking in, looking around, you see yourself in the mirror as a young girl. And as you walk through, you notice that these reflections of you get steadily older. Uh, until you're kind of deeper in the in the hall and you look at yourself in the mirror and you see your twilight self as you're kind of old you know so describe mm -hmm. describe what your character looks like in all in all phases what describe what Rhiannon looks like as they like in what they look like in the mirrors as they pass through. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for, as like, they would just kind of get older, I suppose. I I don't know what other changes there could be. I, I'm, I'm guessing there isn't, like, some weird change to clothing or anything like that. No, it, it's, it's literally, like, the text here says, as the character's walk through ask the players to describe what their characters look like as children and what they might look like in old age mm. uh i guess as a child like uh she would have had kind of her i guess it's like you know she was kind of this like tiny little chubby little kid you know Aww. um hair always up you know Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like a lot was kind of put into her appearance, right? Um, and then as we kind of get older, there's a little bit less and less of that, you know? And you can kind of see, especially in, like, the few years, I guess, that are prior to her as of right now, you'll you see that she's very tired. Oh, like it's noticeable on the face, right? Um, however, when she gets to where she is now and past that, there's this that tiredness seems to go away even after as she gets older. Oh, you know, Man. uh, and then you kind of come to up to this point where she's like this kind of a little bit shorter old lady maybe even a little plump and everything but she looks happy that's sweet yeah man man and once you kind of walk past these last couple mirrors that show you as this like 
sweet old lady and you kind of you maybe have this like light in your heart of just like man like every like things are gonna be okay if i can look like that in in the future then everything's gonna be okay and you kind of turn around to look at the mirror behind you as you've walked past this stage of the hallway and you look at this mirror and your face is upside down <laughs> i see yeah and as you continue to walk through the this kind of like twisting like like it's called the hall but at this point there's different branches of like where you can go right um i see and every mirror that you look at has like a different silly effect at this point now it's like like, like your face is upside down, you've got two heads, uh, like you're walking on your feet, like in like outside of the mirror, but inside the mirror you're walking on your hands somehow, like it's very bizarre. Um, like... I'm, I'm definitely having a good time though. Yeah, it, it's, it's very bizarre. Um, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, that is a 15. Ooh. Holy shit, babe. You're... you're... Oh. Meets it, beats it. Um, so, <laughs> you're looking around for Ruben, right? The, this poor mm -hmm. halfling man who thought he was rejected by the love of his life. Um, mm -hmm. This halfling is gazing word, wordly, worryingly into a mirror. And a little girl in a pig mask can be seen inside the plane, uh, whispering to the halfling's uh, youthful reflection. As soon as she sees the character, uh, or sees Rihanna, excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. the girl turns mm -hmm. and disappears. The figure is gone. Um, you look and you see that... Um, Ruben kind of looks over his shoulder and sees you, and he's kind of wiping away tears. Um, and he says, uh, um, "Sorry, you had to see that. Um, I, I'm, I'll be out of your way now." And he starts no, to try to wait. walk away. Huh? I look. I think you should know something about what just happened. I mean, uh. You, go ahead. Sorry. You, you mean talking to the lady in the pig mask and of Mia? Uh, we're gonna put a pin in that for right now. Uh, but I meant you were proposing, correct? Yeah. Um, to to my partner Ween. Mm. So. The place where you proposed, it was in front of the... Can you remind me, Dan? Uh, the, like, exactly what it looked like? The mannequin of um, Tasha, the Witch Queen. In in front of the, the, the mannequin outside. I, I suppose so. I, I wasn't really paying attention to what was around me. I'm I'm sorry, but that may have been your mistake. You see, the area right there casts a specific spell, I suppose, that causes uncontrollable laughter. What? <laughs> yes. Uh, it it causes people to to laugh uncontrollably. I I see. So Ween wasn't laughing at me. She was laughing because of that thing. Yes. Oh. She quite literally couldn't help it. I see. I I did not know this. Thank you for coming and finding me. I who are you? Oh, um my name is Rhiannon. I I happened to notice and everything and well she she also seemed pre pretty upset with herself to be honest so uh I figured you know 
it would make sense to come and tell you. No reason to ruin an otherwise good day, yeah? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I'll I'll go look for her. Thank you. Um, and you said you wanted to put a pin in the pig girl. Uh, actually, can I ask you about that really quick? What, what did she say? I, I don't quite remember. All I, I, I stopped in front of this mirror and there was a, a girl on the other side, a, a, a this girl that wearing, same girl? yeah, and mm -hmm. she, she asked me if I had any regrets and I said that I did and she told me that she knew someone who could help me and that mm. I would just have to step through the mirror after her, but he's going to kind of put his hand out to the mirror and it stops at the mirror. He goes, it looks like I can't do that now, but I have no intention mm. of going with them now. I see. Just be careful about things like that. I've heard some pretty nasty tales of, of trickery. I see. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And either way, you have a girl to find. I do. Uh, that I do. Do you remember the path back out? Uh, DM. <laughs> uh, give me... Give me either an intelligence or a wisdom check. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do wisdom. Okay. I think. Hang on. Let me double check something really quick. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. Uh, yeah, wisdom. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Okay, and that's a seventeen. Seventeen, you do. Uh, so what you kind of did was as you were walking through, um, at each corner that you made, you kind of like in the grass made a little indent, uh, with your heel. That way, if you needed oh, to... Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you you basically left a, a trail of breadcrumbs out of here, but with just like little divots in the grass with your heel. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So you, you can lead him out. And as you're actually leading him out and you start to watch as you go backwards in time now back to your younger self in the reflections and you will see Ruben's reflection do the same actually um you hear uh a lady's voice say Ruben are you still in here Aww. and uh you watch as a the young halfling girl uh kind of turns down like the curving hall and sees you and Reuben and she runs uh, down the hall and you watch in the mirrors as she gets older and older and older and she runs into the arms of Reuben and you watch as this happen and in the mirrors you can see what they would look like as an older couple now uh, old Aww. and gray and still happy full of full of youth yeah, even at this age, because halflings are halflings. One of their strongest parts is that they remain full of charm and love, even into such extent. And you watch as the two kind of apologize to each other, and they kind of clear up the misconception of like, like what had happened. Um, and they they say something in halfling to each other and then they kiss and Aww. as you watch this happen you can see both them do it and their reflections of course um Aww. you hear oh oh my god i mean you run so fucking fast oh oh happy ending and you look over and you see babru once again out of breath trying to run down this hall <laughs> um and <laughs> he, yeah, and he looks at you and says, "Thank you so much for finding him. I'm, I'm happy to see that they're together again." Oh. Me, me too. 
I say as I kind of look, I kind of glance to the mirror of them as like an old couple. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to see this couple out. I, I, I was told by, I, so, so. They got family somewhere out here in the carnival, and I'm supposed to take them to where they're at now. Oh. <laughs> oh. Take it easy, my friend. Yeah, I need to. I need to lay off the pastries. And he kind of hobbles over <laughs> to the two, and he kind of puts a hand on their back. Um. And you can walk out of the Hall of Illusions. And you remember. Uh, that then then went down to the Silver Song Lake, so you can start making your way down there to see how she's doing. You All want. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely gonna go and, and check up on you. Okay. While you're walking down there, um, mm -hmm. give me a perception check. Ooh. Okay. Damn, I'm on a roll tonight. <laughs> Freaking nineteen. Nineteen, huh? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. You like so th this has been happening since you've gotten to the carnival, pretty much. Um, uh -huh. you hear just this like this ringing of a couple like bells, like ching 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 ching, -ching, -ching. and you feel like it's been following you like since you've gotten here, and you figured like oh it must be like one of the clowns. Right, and every time you look around, you don't see a clown with bells. Mm. So it, it's it's been kind of getting to you, like where the fuck has this noise been coming from? And then you kind of look over near the big top, and kind of like doing his best to seem in like like totally not following you, right? But absolutely following <laughs> you is. A clown. Uh, a clown. They are a male goblin dressed in a pink, purple, and white clown outfit with white face paint. Uh, two colored gem designs are painted over their their eyes, and his lips have been painted green. He has long green hair and a fairly large nose. And it, it he, not in the picture, but what I intended was um uh he has bells on on his hat let's see That's and on his shoes this is gumption i put it in npc Aww. depictions this time yeah let me let Wait, me you put it in oh npc yeah. oh look at him yeah adorable little guy think... little fellow so what do you what do you do now that you've noticed this clown has been following you? Uh I'm gonna go walk up to him. Uh at, as you approach, he kinda like is like looking around at the lights, just kinda you know, fiddling with his Try hands. Nonchalant. Yeah, and as he notices you approach, he kinda gets wide eyed and he starts like kinda backing up, but he backs up into the, the tent of the big top, so you've kinda cornered him. Uh-huh. And he goes, I've got a crush on you. Uh, uh, how can I help you, ma'am? Hey, I think I may have seen you around, actually. Uh, are you doing performances here? Uh, no, not right now. I'm, I'm on my break. As you can see, I'm not wearing any fairy ring wings at this, at this time. Fairy wings? Yes, uh, any any um, witch light hands that are that are working with the fairy wings. I'm I'm not, so I'm I'm on break right now. I'm I'm heading to the staff arena or the area. Excuse me. I see. And then, okay, as flavor, can I have it where that? Mark appears on her throat as she kind of tries to lie about something. Mm -hmm. 
and she kind of is like, ah, uh, 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 forget it. Why are you following me? I, I'm a, I, uh, Gareth needs your help. Excuse me? Yeah, uh, my, my master, Gareth, um, he, he knew that you would be coming here, so he sent me to see if you can get into the Feywild and, and rescue him. R rescue him? Yeah. Uh, what? I'm sorry, but isn't he kind of the reason for my little condition? I I wouldn't know. I'm a recent hire, if you can mm. call a couple years a, a recent hire. Um, I was just oh, told to right. be here, look for you, and if you can get into the Feywild, to go with you and, and lead you to him. Well, wait a minute. What? Why would he want my help of all people? Hey, it's, ma'am. It's not my place to ask. I'm sorry. Your place to. Ah, <sighs> great. <sighs> I'll be honest, though. If I help, would he at least? Oh no. If if you want something for Gareth and you help him, I imagine he'd be willing to give you anything. I don't know. Uh, I mean I'm not I'm not even quite sure as she kind of struggles to find the words, you know. Um and she'll she'll say would he take off the curse he put on me curse i i'm more than certain he would i gareth is the the prince of prismire after all he he could do anything once you're there again why would he need my help though what exactly happened he he's gonna kind of look around and he notices like other witch light hands now looking at him and he goes uh, do you mind if we bring this conversation elsewhere i'll i'll tell you a little where we're more private i am gonna raise my eyebrow at him and kind of like a little i'm a little bit suspicious of him right um and then i'm gonna Kind of go, kind of sigh and go. <gasps> okay. Okay. Thank you. Just don't try anything funny. I, I'm just a little clown man. I I don't know what you could expect from me. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know. You happen to apparently work for the one guy that I'm kind of a bit angry at right now. Fair so... point. Um. I, I just, I just say, you know, I can't do anything he can do. So don't have too high expectations for me. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I you're, uh, okay. She's like, kind of, kind of look at this guy and she's going to put a hand on his shoulder and he's going to say, it's, she's going to say, it's fine. You're not, I'm not, I'm not mad at you or anything. It's just a lot to take in, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and he kind of looks around and he goes, um, there's a, a, a bench I know in the Feasting Orchard that's off to the side and nobody really goes back there. Uh, why don't we talk back there? All right. Sounds good. And she's going to kind of gonna take his hand and she's gonna say lead the way uh, 
he'll he'll nod and when he nods the the bells kind of ring on his floppy hat um and he will <laughs> lead you to the feasting orchard and he'll bring you back there okay once again uh i'm gonna be right back but this time i'm gonna leave it going so if you guys want to chit chat on the recording you can okay <laughs> yeah so i'll be back okay busy yeah what's up with rihanna and gareth huh <laughs> that that's some some backstory i'm just uh, saying but i smell a love affair a love affair. you know the normal girl with the pain prince. He stole oh. her eyes from her heart. Sealed it with a kiss. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, but you... For one, you know me so well. <laughs> I know and I two... Do. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, you better not. I'm loving it. <laughs> Scandalous. Secrecy. Oh. Scandal. It's not even scandalous. Oh, but. but... <laughs> Ooh, so scandalous. <laughs> Den Den it is. <laughs> oh, Den Den like, everyone but you. From Den Den. But it's me. I just really love this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, though. Den Den would live for the drama. Mm, yeah, Den Den yeah, would perhaps. totally, like, see that going on and be like, hmm. <laughs> I want to see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Still, gee, a prince. Wow. I know, that's pretty fancy. <laughs> that's yourself a big one. I'm just going to repeat this as well, but I think I think she should make him beg. Definitely. <laughs> just for the Definitely. satisfaction that it brings. <laughs> right also freaking at some point we should go check on the mermaid girl because like the i think she I, thinks yeah that it's the it's that one clown guy's voice because like that's the voice that was stolen and they were like lovers or whatever so to yes, hear him yes. saying that i was very torn on whether uh whether i should go after the kanku or the mermaid but i thought you know Ah, and just the mermaid's probably Julius. out crying somewhere. You'll find her later, but the king exactly. is and I thought, oh, high priority. Maybe one of the others can get her or something. Cause yeah, I, if I anything, like I'm her. coming up too. So <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> so I'll I'll probably be like, I you know, hey hey mermaid gal, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and as I have this sad little clown jingling <laughs> behind me. Yeah, that's <laughs> That guy seems like he like he gives off the vibes of a minimum wage worker. <laughs> Who? Uh, the um the, the sad little guy. clown. Gumption. Yes. Yeah, Gumption. Gumption. Who doesn't have very much Gumption? Right? No, that's that's kind of the joke. <laughs> I, I do believe so. This is up next, and I'm curious curious to see if she uh if he was actually or they. What's actually, what are Silva's pronouns? Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't know yet. Okay. What have we been calling them, just them? Still. I don't know. Uh, they've been covered up, like, the whole time. Uh, I do, I do wonder if Silva is actually going to be sent where they were asked to be sent, or if oh, the goblin was just like, I'm going to get this to get lunch. <laughs> that that'd be that'd be really fucking funny. But I, I already did say that they that yeah, they could I see, see um lady. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Good. So is that uh Okay. Man, I'm so snotty. Yeah. Where is Okay. Bring that forward. Alright. Uh Silvis. Yes. Um you well, oh, real quick, actually, before I go on to you, um, I wanted to mention, um, while uh, Rhiannon and Gumption are kind of going uh, around to the Feasting Orchard, um, they notice kind of in this, like, uh, this, like, kind of 
area over here, right, uh, is actually the get together of a fairly extensive halfling family. Um, and by this point, you would notice, um, uh, like, Reuben and Ween and Babru and a couple other um, halflings who, as, as actually Reuben, or Reuben, uh, Rhiannon, as you and Gumption kind of walk in here, um, mm -hmm. you, you can see that, like, Reuben, uh, Ween, Baneer, or Baneer, um, that's my D&D &D character, uh, Babru, um, just arrived at these tables and a bunch of halflings who are like, ah, you know, like, oh, she said yes, you know, just having a good time, right? Um, and as you're kind of walking over here, you do notice, um, uh, uh, Silvis is over by the carousel and you do hear noise coming from under the tent here. So, <laughs> like, you, you've kind of got this, like, okay, I'm gonna talk to the, this clown here, but then I, I pr should probably go see what's up with that. Silvis, you, you do also notice, uh, Rhiannon being led through the orchard, um, by a small clown. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cool. It's a small clown. Yeah, you you probably have this mode of like, is that uh, is that Reuben? Reuben, the sandwich. I, <laughs> the fucking the the halfling there. <laughs> like, did he turn into a <laughs> goblin? What happened? You know. And then then you look over at the the halfling like get together at those tables, and you're like, oh wait, no, that's Reuben. Okay. Anyways, centaur is not a centaur. I gotta talk to her. Um, so you approach. Um, you see as she's just kind of like standing behind this table. She's greeting people and, and punching tickets and bringing people on. And then um, once there's enough people on the carousel, she kind of moves her hand to the side and it starts spinning as if magic, right? Um, and she notices you approach, and she kind of, she kind of tilts her head at you, with kind of this like, like, huh, you know, like she, she, like almost like she she recognizes you a little bit. Give me a history check. That is a 19. A 19. You get the vague sense that you've seen her before, but not... She's, like... The person that you've seen with this face was not a centaur. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I mean, they're not a centaur either, so... They're not... They're totally not a centaur. <laughs> they just look like a centaur. Well, they're not a centaur. Um, but after this kind of, like, glance of, like, do, do I know you? She kind of shakes her head, and as you approach, she says, uh, good morning to you. Uh, would you like to ride the carousel? Uh, no, I'm good. Um, I was told, uh, Carl, remind me, I was told, or Silvas was told, they knew it went into the Feywild, basically. Right. Um, yeah, you, you were told that she knows okay. a way in. Yeah, so so I was just gonna ask about that. So you know a way into the Feywild. I. Mm, mm. She she nods, but you see that she can't talk about it. Hmm. Could you write it for me? She she kind of gives a shrug and she kind of looks past you and you see uh, 
Mr. Witch and Mr. Light walking past you. Oh, <laughs> Oh my god, there's okay. a Mr. Witch and a Mr. Light? Yeah. Uh <laughs> well, the Witch Light Carnival. <laughs> yeah, let me let me grab their their pictures real quick if I can find oh them. Oh my goodness. That's as soon as Google lets me download things again. That's Mr. Witch. Where's Mr. Light? Do I not have a picture of him? I do. Oh, He's no. literally right next to Mr. Witch. <laughs> Crazy how that happens. Okay. Um, oh, I love that. Um, here. So, this is Mr. Witch. And this is Mr. Light. Lumpy. That is, that is adorable. I cannot lie. Yeah. So you you watch as these two like very strange figures kind of walk through the crowd, kind of like past you, and you see Mr. Light is kind of like doing magic tricks for kids as he watches, and you see that he's kind of like talking, you know, to various like people as he walks by, basically just putting on like a little sideshow while he walks with Mr. Witch. Yeah. And Mr. Witch kind of walks with the cane and is kind of like giving this half smile like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he kind of stops a moment and he looks over at you and Diana. And there's this kind of this like steely gaze for a minute before he kind of turns back and he starts walking again. And you watch as they kind of disappear behind these tents and they're, they're gone into the crowd. Um, okay. Diana kind of like, you know, s scrapes a hoof on the ground and she kind of leans down onto her table. Um, some people get off the carousel and they walk off. And she goes, listen, um, if I can't say a whole lot about where you're going, but if you're going to get there, you're going to need to go through those two. And you're you're gonna need Mr. Witch's light. Uh, um, uh, what's it called? His his watch. Um, if if you want to know more, I suggest riding the carousel. But that's all I can say. Um, um, yeah, I'll take a spin. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll stamp your ticket here, and if you hand your ticket, she'll click it, yeah. and you can kind of walk onto the carousel, um, and you kind of walk around. Let's see here. So, you notice there's one, two, three, four pairs of unicorns, uh, with a name tag on a bridle. Uh, some of the names are legible, while other names are worn and indecipherable. Uh, names of each unicorn uh, are keywords from well-known proverbs. Um, so, with that, uh, one unicorn has... One unicorn in each pair has some letters missing from its name tag, but players who are familiar with the proverbs can fill in these missing letters. The first pair. The first pair of unicorns are named Fortune and Bold, right? So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you that one for free from the proverb Fortune favors the bold. 
So you can kind of. I was about to say. <laughs> I was just about to say too. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you got that right. So yeah. you you walk over to, um, um, like you you maybe you have like a like a paintbrush or like some ink, and you can just very quickly look over your shoulder and write B L D right on on the side of the first unicorn right okay uh then you approach uh another one and the first one is our you notice that the first one only has a pr and the second one is named fall It has three spaces afterwards. So it's PR, three spaces, fall. Yeah. Like, like th this horse is named PR, three spaces, and you have to fill in those three spaces, and its sister unicorn is named fall. Let me know if you want to pass on this, and I'll just make you do like a like a intelligence check. Oh, what's the first letter? P R. P R. Okay. P R three spaces. It's like a game of hangman, except nothing's yeah. gonna hang. For a second, I was like, oh, did, were you saying T instead of P? No. No. I'll tell you what, just give me give me an intelligence check. Yeah. God, their intelligence is not that great. And give me a wisdom uh, instead oh, if you want. Actually. Wisdom or intelligence, whatever, whatever's higher. No, no, wisdom is good. No, wisdom is bad. Intelligence is good. Okay. So, okay, I'll just give intelligence then. Because that's easy. Just plus three. That's a nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteens today. Uh, you kind of struggle for a hot minute, and then you go. Per fall per. If only I knew how this go. Oh, uh, pride goes before a fall. And you can uh, fill in the three spaces with I D E. I've never heard that in my entire life. <laughs> I know. I I knew that was gonna be one that you you struggle with. <laughs> Um, I was thinking in my head, like, like oh, I'm going to use all of these. Nope. <laughs> nope. Second one. Um, okay, you go to the third pair. Um, the first one's name is Stone, and the second one has an M, and then two spaces, and then an S. Stone. Are you typing in <laughs> proverbs involving stones? No, no. I'm, okay. I'm putting it in the chat so I can visualize it. Yes. Oh, gotcha. In the chat. I did see that notification. I, I I'm telling you, you're overthinking it. What's a I proverb that am. goes like what? What proverb involves a stone? Like what? What? What proverb Bird. involving a stone? Don't even think about the second word. Just what? What's a saying that you 
you know involves a stone. Just off the top of your head. Two birds, one stone is the only thing my brain is coming up with, and that is not it. Okay, let's ask the the other two. What do you have any idea? Like, if you had to say a proverb involving a stone, like off the top of your head, what do you think it'd be? Oh, just any proverb? Because any... I... yeah, any. Because I'm like think it's sticks and stones, you know. Hmm, that's another one. Uh, yeah, no, that's. You you you're getting one. close though. You're you're um... cutting out options here. I could tell you so many German proverbs. Well, the, these are in English, so. Uh, yeah. I'm at a disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Mm. Give me give me a I'm wisdom not... check. Wisdom? Oh. Uh, not wisdom, intelligence, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, jeez, jeez, Louise. My worst roll yet. That's a seven. Uh, that beats a five. A rolling stone <laughs> gathers no moss. Who oh. uses that though? Uh, I, yeah, I haven't heard that either. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I have never heard that one. Really? Yeah. Man. Me neither. What the, does I, it actually mean? Uh, yeah. it it basically means like if the more you move, the less tracks that you're going, like the less you're gonna pick up, really. Oh, okay. Uh, so like, it's more positive, yeah. It, yeah, it's a, it's about just yeah. keep going. Okay, because I like um, it. and the last one I'm gonna give you it because I've never heard this one before, and I, I looked around and I could not find anyone else who actually knew this one. Um, so the first one's name is Stitch, and the last one is Space, Space, Ew. and Ew. Space. And you you have this moment of just like, all right, what the fuck is this one, right? And then you think back to something maybe your mom said, right? Well, well, maybe having some clothes. A stitch in time saves nine. I think I've actually. I've heard that once. <laughs> yeah, I I know I've heard that like once. I so, feel like I've heard like a variation of that that didn't have the word stitch in it. Mm -hmm. For some reason, my brain wants to tell me it's from the movie Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Which would make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't think it's in there. <laughs> um, yeah, I would not have gotten that. All right. So once you finish off the, the last name... Um, you feel the uh you look around you notice that you're the only one on the carousel at this time um and you feel it go under your feet as it starts to spin and you watch as each unicorn kind of moves up and down and as they kind of move you hear them start like neighing and making noises and you start to hear diana's voice in your head um, in fact, Rhiannon, um, you yeah. hear something in the back of your head say, Gareth is, uh, or not Gareth, um, the thing that you are looking for is held by the witch known as Sabethka Nightshade. The best good nightshade. Yeah, I'll, I'll put I'll put her name in the chat. And yeah, so Maddie, you don't hear that one, but Rhiannon does. Yeah, okay. Um, I will immediately forget. It. It's gone. Yeah. Um. And Rhiannon, you also hear that. Um. You you also hear that they can be found in a dead, hollowed out tree, in a sylvan forest, somewhere in Prismire. I 
see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the last thing you hear is the hag you seek sleeps in a dollhouse and can't remember the first creature she sees when she wakes up. And can't remember? And can't remember the first creature she sees when she wakes up. I'm posting it in the chat, too. Okay. So that that's what you get, Rhiannon. You hear this in the back of your head, and you kind of look down at Gumption, who's still kind of like doing the goblin walk, leading you um, over to that like private area. Um, okay. And from what you can tell, he's not beaming this into your head, so you don't know where this knowledge is coming from. But uh, you've got okay. it now. Um, Maddie, this is what Silvis does learn, though, from these unicorns who are now talking in her head. Um, cool. Zybilna, the queen of Prismire, is frozen in time, trapped. Three hags have seized control of her domain and split it among them. Togethers, together, these hags form the Hourglass Coven. The hag's names are Balvorna Brightstraw, Skabetha Nightshade, and Edelna Moongrove, and their splinter realms are called Hither, Thither, and Yon. The coven is so riddled with distrust that each hag is convinced that her sisters are plotting against her. In order to get into Prismire, you must learn the uh, the passphrase by Mr. Witch or Mr. Light, and you must possess Mr. Witch's watch. Oh, cool. Let's read what's in his head. Oh, no. So, here's, here's all that information, by the way. I'm posting that in chat. Oh, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> let, me, let me space this out for you. God, my knees. Yeah. So th this... Could you, could you pin it, maybe? Uh, sure. Thank you. Let me pin. And then... There you go. We should really just make like a notes chat and then just share yeah. notes there. Yeah. Here. We yeah, should notes. How idea. about how about that? Let's if somebody wants to move what I just pinned into that chat and then pin it, then go for it. Yes. You can't pin. Yeah, that's two. We can't pin things. Sorry. Really? How do yeah. I I think it's the thing you have to roles. do. Roles. I recommend yeah. doing it later. Okay, yeah, it's, I'll it's better. To just later. just paste the stuff in the notes chat and it's call it. it a day. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So after you kind of received the last of that information, the ride kind of slows to a stop, and you get off. And you watch as a couple kids run past you and jump on the various unicorns who now have their full names again. And you can walk up or past uh, Diana. And as you're kind of walking out away, you see Rhiannon talking to a little clown. So you can go join them here in a sec. All right. Den Den! Me, hello. Yes, the scrappy little fairy stuck in a in a tent with a rambunctious Kenku. Let's see how this plays out. Um, <laughs> Just cartoon fighting sound effects as you see like the classic clouds and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you fly under. Uh, let's see here. Let me let me find. Oh my God! Where did where did the thing go? Where did their information go? Oh, God. 
I lost everything about this Kenku. And like... No! Ah, there they are. Alright, okay. So, you, you f fly under and you see this Kenku desperately like looking like trying to squeeze under the other side of this uh tent to no success uh, um kenku and kenku form or human form kenku and kenku form they are like a full bird right now uh, in fact i i have character art of them if you want it yes please uh, let me I said I had it, and then I, I lost it immediately. <laughs> Where are they? There they are. Uh, NPC depictions. Bear. There. They're, they're a little crow kenku with, like, a feathery outfit, and they have fake uh, butterfly wings on their back. All right. That's wonderful. Good to know. Um... Then I will shout, wait right there, fly over and bite their hand. Uh, <laughs> you roll over and you bite their hand, and you, like, feel, like, you, you basically, like, you bite their hand, they go, ah! And their hand goes whipping back. Uh, uh -oh. give me a dexterity saving throw. So rude. Uh, hang on. You know, I do enjoy doing these things without thinking twice. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> yes. Um, hang on now. Uh, oh, okay. That's an 11? Uh, you get, like, you get flung off this Kenku's hand, and you get, like, shot through the air, and you hit the, the 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 tent wall on the other side of this tent with like a ah uh, oh you fucking asshole Jesus Christ you I, I'm sure you don't say that in character why not because Jesus Christ doesn't exist in this world ah right yes no that's just a an OC of Den Den okay well you, you can you can curse at them and like. They, they they keep trying to, like, scoot under this side of the tent, and they're just like, Well, you bit me! Go well, away! I, I just stop! Why would you even make a mermaid cry? I just want to know what's wrong with you! I, you wouldn't understand! Cry me! I, so Bina needs help, and I'm going to rescue her! And they keep trying to squeeze under uh, who needs help? Wait, who needs help? Zybilna. W well, hang on. Zybilna is also your friend, too. <laughs> yes, I am very aware. I just needed to look up again if I do remember that name or not. You do. You you know that name. All right. Do you know Zybilna? And the Kenku kind of stops for a moment. And they start, like... They nod, and you see that they start pulling out a knife, right? Uh -huh. But rather than trying to attack you, with, they start trying to cut the tent a little bit. And they're like, yeah. Oh, just yeah. stop it. She's my friend, all right? What, 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 what? How, can, how can I know I can trust you? How can I know I can trust you? How can I know that I can trust you? Well, well, we can't trust each other, but that means we're still on equal ground, right? We could still help each other, since neither of us knows we can trust each other. That makes sense. Okay. And they kind of put the knife away, and they kind of turn around, and they sit on the grass across and, from me. And then then she'll put their needle away and sit across as well. And uh, the Kenku will kind of dip their head and say, "I'm I'm a warlock of Zybilna. Um, I I was supposed to go into Prismire to go celebrate with her. There was a party that was going on, 
but before I could cross into the Feywild, something happened to her, and now I can't go in. I came to this carnival to find a way in, but nobody will help me. So uh, I'm causing trouble until I become enough of a nuisance that they'll send me back to the Feywild. Ah, uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I, uh, have you... Well, I don't know if that's the best solution. So I must admit, maybe I would have done the same thing if I were on my own. Uh, well, okay, but yes, I would also like to help Zybilda. I I do know that she requires it. What, what me and my friends were looking into a way uh, for a way into the Feywild as well. You can just stop causing trouble and just go with us, since we could help you and you could help us. Give me a persuasion check. Oh no. <laughs> with, with advantage, because you know Zybilna and you seem to be telling the truth to Kettlestein. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. <laughs> what, was, what did you say? Persuasion? Yes. I, I remember making this character sheet and deciding that I wouldn't do anything oh. useful with my skills and just have fun. And you know, I'm not regretting it yet. I'm not enjoying it, but I'm not regretting it. Okay. Oh! That's a net 20, baby. Yeah! Uh, like, you you say that, and then there's this moment, like, where um, Kettle's team kind of clicks their beak a couple times. And then you just hear this kind of like, <laughs> and they start crying. Why are you crying? She's like gotta fly up to him. Not uh, touch him though, just just press. Okay. Uh through kinda like weird bird squawking and crying, they ex they explain that they've been so lonely and that nobody's been willing to help them and that they've been scared and you know like oh. just basically they've been having a miserable time trying to get into the Fey Wild and they feel bad about being so mean, but they but it was like the only way they thought they could get in. Oh, Kettlestein, I'm so sorry to hear this. How about this? Listen, you've, you've made some trouble, and actually I was after you first because I offered to help some people. Um, how about we go and apologize to... Uh, what What's her name? The, 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 the Splash or something? The mermaid lady? And then we'll reconvene with my friends and find a way into the Feywild to help our friends Zabilna together. Yeah? They they kind of wipe away a tear, and they nod, and they start and to never, get up. And I'll never poke out your eye. Promise. Promise. Okay. Promise. Yeah. I'm sorry for being mean. Well, you know, as long as you apologize and do better in the future, I think that's the best someone can do. Okay. And <laughs> they kind of walk out of the tent with you. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. I I'm going to I'm going to speed you along a little bit. Yes. Um you you make it over uh to the Hall of Illusions. Uh let's see here. I got to Oh my goodness. Um, and you not only find um, uh, 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 oh my god, what's her name? I don't know. Falsha? Falsha, that's it. Um, you <laughs> you spot Falsha in the river um, and you see Candlefoot kind of like peeking around this tree right here at her. Well, oh no. Uh-huh. Because he's like, I want to go talk to her and, like, say something, but, I, like, I like I can't talk, you know? So she's just going to think I'm a creepy little clown, you know? Oh, no. Uh -huh. um, so you and Kettle's theme walk up, and, uh, like, Kindlefoot kind of turns and looks and sees you and Kettle's theme, and he starts to, like, put up a foot and stomp his or he puts up a hand and like stomps his foot and like starts marching over to Kettle's theme, who kind of ducks his head a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Who like he he thinks he's gonna get hit, 
my candle foot. Oh no! Um, I'm pull out my needle and have it for me. He's gonna stop. You know, Kelsey, you should give him his voice back. He's not gonna hit you. If he would, I would poke him in so many different unpleasant places. Candle, uh, Candlefoot's gonna look at you with kind of this, like, confused, like, why are you protecting this little gremlin? Um, mm -hmm. and Ken, or, uh, Kettle seems gonna nod, and they're gonna look up at Candlefoot and say, I'm sorry, I, I did a lot of bad things with your voice, and I, I, I just needed to, I'm sorry. And as they kind of, like, apologize and they they start to explain like their situation <laughs> candlefoot kind of like lets out a sigh and it's just like all right and candlefoot is going to put their hand on the top of this bird's head and kind of pet them a minute oh. and uh -huh. there's kind of this once again there's this like this the the mood uh, like this this happiness Literally lights up everything a little bit. Oh. Um, and you hear Candlefoot, who is this very lanky, kind of like scrawny mime who's kind of silly looking, go, It's quite all right. I, I had a feeling that there would be some sort of misunderstanding, but I, I was so impatient and I, it's okay, little one. So he's like, despite his appearance, he's got a very like lovely voice. Yeah. Uh huh. And he's gonna get down on one knee and he's going to hug the Kenku, oh. who's going to start crying again. Oh no. Um. Wait, do I have any jars with me? Because I'm just gonna say, well, you know, Dan Dan enjoys making jam, mm -hmm. so. Jars? Uh, you probably have a little tiny jar. Yeah. Uh, yes, then you do. Listen, I've needed weird things in my life before. Can I try to collect one of Kenosin's tears in one of my j tiny, tiny jars? Uh, you can. Add, yes. add Kenku tear to your inventory for some reason. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, with that, um, he kind of gets up and he, he pats the Kenku again and says, um, I hope that you and you um, find what you're looking for. And I, I hope that you can rescue your friend, Zybilna. Um, I don't know much about the Feywild despite working in this carnival, but if things are as bad as it seems... I wish the both of you luck, and I wish that your group will find success in the future. Be safe, be careful, and stick together. Now, if you excuse me, and he walks on over to the mermaid, who is kind of slunk down in the water, and you can't overhear what they're saying, but um, he kind of gets down and like after kind of this exchange, the mermaid rises out of the water just a little bit and kisses Candlefoot on the cheek. Oh, okay. And once again, like those of you who are like even on the other side of the carnival, you notice as the lights kind of get a little brighter and the air becomes cheerier, the mood increases by two. <laughs> Okay. So let me move oh God. this thing. All right. So I'm going to have that move. All right. Uh, Den Den, I'm going to say that you definitely saw both Rhiannon and Silvis in the Feasting Orchard. So I'm going to say you can zip back over there with Kenku. Yes, I shall do this. Okay. So, you and Kenku make your way there. Thank you. I'm I'm trying to make you guys back all in the same area. 
<laughs> what? I totally didn't notice. Yeah, right. Um, so, Rhiannon. Uh, you and Gumption kind of move off onto this corner uh, between the, the trees and the water here. And right. Gumption kind of stops and he fidgets with his hand and says, So, uh, so. here's w what I know and what I can tell you. Um, so there's this hag, this ugly lady named uh, Sky, Sky Bethna. Sky Bethna? Nightshade. Scabatha? Scabatha. Wait, how do you know her name? Mm. Learned about it recently. Okay, anyways. So, there's this hag. And he, he like, puts out his hands. And, he like, he's looking away from you and kind of talking. So, there's this hag. Um, she turned... Uh, Gareth into a wand of smiles because he did something. I I don't know. You know how Gareth is. Um, she turned him into a wand of smiles and has trapped him away somewhere in her mess of a home. And now I can't get back into the Feywild without going behind Mr. Which and Mr. Light's back. Uh, because I'm not a regular fair goer. I, I can't win the monarch crown and, and meet them personally and maybe ask for a favor. A monarch crown? Yeah. So at the end of the night, and he points up, um, there is an event where. Uh, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light crowns uh, the Witch Light Monarch. Uh, basically someone who has caused a lot of joy and happiness in the carnival. And not only do they get a gift, but they get to speak to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light privately. Um, I see. I haven't had that opportunity because I've had to work here while I waited for you. Um, so I think that's where we wait. should start. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So how did you end up working here then? About that. Um, mm. So here's my order of events, right? I was with Gareth... And when he got turned into the wand, I fled. And as I was fleeing, he told me to go to the witch like carnival. So I came here. Now, I couldn't just stay here because the carnival picks up and leaves. So the only way to go with it is if I worked here. Now... That's what I've been doing while I've been waiting for someone, you, to get here. And mm. for you, it's probably only been like, I don't know, seven minutes. But for me, it's been like a whole year. Seven I, minutes? I Time's weird. I don't, like, the carnival doesn't just stay here in the material realm. It... it it goes to other places. There's a place called Eberron that we go to sometimes. There's, uh, like, other places, uh, like, on Tenere. Like, we go everywhere, you know? And I see. I don't know if you've noticed, the last hour went by pretty quickly. We haven't even gotten to the big topic extravaganza yet. Time doesn't move the same here. I see. Mm -hmm. So, I'm guessing we have to stay here long enough in order to either see who gets crowned or become crowned, right? Yeah. So, is is the is your plan to 
simply ask them to to allow us into the Fey realms, or I, maybe do you have a better idea? Well, no, but I just wanted to get things straight. Then, yes, that's my plan, and it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am also here with two other people, by the by. I, I, um, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, like, uh, that's right, because you've been following me. I, yes, I've been following you. But I needed to make sure you were who I thought you were. I see. So how did you know that I was the right person? He shrugs. <laughs> That's not a lot of information. I... This guy is just fucking clueless and I support him so much. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he don't get paid enough to know things. You know? Knowing things. Yeah. Um, but he shrugs and he goes, I don't know. I, we're having this conversation, which confirmed my hunch. That's what, that's really all I had. I had a hunch that you might be the person. I'll be honest, even saying that you had at least a somewhat of a description of how I appeared or something would, would have been a little less suspicious than what you're saying right now. He, he fidgets some more. <laughs> And I'm going to shrug, and I'm going to say, however, I'm I'm also not paid to care, so. That's fair. I, I didn't know Gareth was paying you. No, he's, he's not. <laughs> oh. Uh, you are a funny one. Thank you. I, I guess I... it's in the job description. Yes, it is, whether I like it or not. Okay, um, I think I see your so... friends over there. Oh, man, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to kind of get up, and I'm going to say, how about, since we're right here anyway, why don't we go into the orchards for, for a meal with uh, the others and kind of recollect? Sounds... I'm assuming that you're coming with. I am. I once we get away into Prismire, I'm I'm quitting this job. Well, I I assumed so. Didn't know if you wanted to be a clown forever. I, if I can help it, I'll never be a clown for the rest of my life, unless Gareth makes me. Hmm. Well, I'll put in a good word. <laughs> I would appreciate it, considering that I'm gonna be half of the team. That's rescuing his dumb ass. Did you say half? Wait. No, not half. We have other people in this group. <laughs> I can't. It's so fucking funny. It's okay if math isn't exactly your strong suit. I, well, it's not. I didn't go to school. <laughs> We're gonna have to teach you some basics. <laughs> uh, no promises. I didn't go to school by choice. <laughs> he he walks with you over to the others. Okay. Um, I'm a I'm a I'm a grab his hand again because I keep getting scared. He's gonna get lost. He's so small. <laughs> um. Okay. I, I can't fly like Dentin. <laughs> okay. You you walk over and you see. I'm actually gonna. Get rid of your guys' individual icons because now we can use the big pretty one again. Hell yeah. Ooh, all right. We've been reunited. Yes. The compass is now together again. Um, <sighs> Renan, you walk over and you find uh, Silvis, Denden, Den, and a little Kenku with butterfly wings sitting on a log. Um, uh, who here wants to have gotten? Uh, fairy cupcakes at this point. Me. Uh, for sure. Cool. Genuine ones or like carnival cake ones? Like <laughs> carnival ones. They 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 look pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. Okay, cool. 
Are we all getting cupcakes? Uh, yeah, if you want them. You just gave them the opportunity, so do it. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get some for, for uh, gumption as well. Nice. All right. So you guys all have cupcakes, and you walk over, and you sit next to Silvis um, and Den Den. And there's also this Kenku who is like still kind of like teary eyed, just a little bit like pecking at a cupcake. Um, I'm going to say hello to the Kenku. They're gonna, they're gonna wave, and they're gonna, uh, in kind of this like deep voice because it's the Kenku. Once now that they don't have Candlefoot's voice, they have to mimic things in order to talk. Uh, you hear this, like, actually, you hear this very, like, light, happy, hello, as if it, like, comes from, like, a, like, a little lady. Oh, I'm gonna nod my head, and I'm gonna say, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, it seems that you guys have had a fruitful day. Yes, I gained a pet. A, a pet? <laughs> the kettle steam kind of like crooks his head up at you, uh, Den Den, and goes, goes, <laughs> not a pet. <laughs> Sorry, I know you aren't. Oh but my you goodness! Did. You gained a pet, Rihanna. I'm not a oh, oh. pet. What? <laughs> Wait, are you talking about that? And, and she's gonna kind of, she's not, not gonna lie, she's gonna snicker a little bit. Um, okay. And then she's, no, it's, got pets. this is, this is a one? new, this is a new friend, not a pet. Maybe this is, uh, did, this is, this is Gumption. And, and he, he's going Gumption. to be traveling with us. He's gonna yeah. take off his little clown hat and bow, kind of an, ex an exaggerated motion before putting his hat back on. Rhiannon, are you saying your pets aren't your friends? Yeah, what the heck? I'm not a pet. I'm, I'm a I'm a clown. He's, <laughs> he's, a, he's his own person. He's not. I think pet. I think being a pet is better than being a clown, buddy. Oh well, me my gosh! Too. Why are you being so mean to him? Yeah, you who? get free food if you're a pet. Sorry, if you're a clown. You I get free food by working here. Well, okay, then I also get free, That's actually pretty... Wait a minute, Silvis. Silvis, you have gained free food too. Does that make you our pet? <laughs> mm, does it? <laughs> According to your logic, yes. Wait. Anyways, I know her by proxy. Is is this the rest of your group? Yes. Uh, though the the Kiku is a new addition. Ah, yes. I picked him up. He's my friend now. I think. Yes. Very nice. They they nod and they say, Zybilna! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I see, I see. We need to help my dear friend Zybilna together. The the Kenku nods furiously. Like, like yes, we, we're, we're going on an adventure, we're saving her, and I'm part of a group. I have friends now. Yes, Den Den is also <laughs> nodding furiously. Aww. Um, I'm going to say, well... The more the merrier, I I'd, I'd say. Man. Um so Gumption is going to kind of look at the group and say, Okay. So as I told Rhiannon, um, the only way into the into Prismire is by somehow getting something from Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Um Apparently, they're our only chance into uh, the Feywild again. So, we could do something stupid, like try to steal Mr. Witch's li uh, uh, watch from him. That would be ridiculous. He would, like, incinerate us on the spot or something. Or turn us into toads. Or, like, feed us to the fish in the river. People. Yeah, or turn us into little... <laughs> hey! Um, anyways, I'm just kidding. 
Sure. Half. Why are we all so mean to this little guy? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> the... He's just a little Sorry, clown. Just... Yeah. He's a clown, actually, to be fair. Yeah. The... Good point. <laughs> he, uh, he goes, From what I can tell, and I've been here for a while, the best way to interact with those two and maybe get something out of them is by being crowned the Witchlight Monarch at the end of the night. Now, the only way to do that is to make sure that you've spread a lot of joy and happiness and improve the carnival somehow. Now, I have, I have spread exclusively joy. Uh, like, Gumption will kind of nod a little bit and say, I can see that. I Since you guys have gotten here, the lights have been brighter and the sky has been brighter, so I... I have a feeling that it was you guys. Yes. Yeah, that was totally us. Exclusively. Well, I don't know about exclusively. You may have some competition out there, but the night's still young. <laughs> All right. So I guess the most we can do is try to do as much good as possible. Yeah? Yeah, and just yeah. enjoy the carnival while you're here, I suppose. Oh, right. We do also Are need to there... get rid of these terribly suspicious creatures wandering around. What suspicious Actually, creatures? That's ex that was exactly what I was going to point out. How Earlier today, uh, when I went into the Hall of Mirrors, there was this little girl in a pig mask that I think tried to trick, a trick this man into going into the mirror. Mm -hmm. It was very strange. Mm -hmm. Gumption kind of, like, scratches his chin for a moment and goes, Hmm. That sounds like one of Nightshade's little gremlins. Nightshade? Um, oh. Who's Nightshade? Nightshade. Huh. Um, I see. They... That's how they've been getting in and out. Hmm. So it seems like the way into the Feywild is in... The Hall of Illusions, but we still need the password or a, a item that lets us in there. And Mr. Witch well, and Mr. Light have that. Well, when this little girl had spoken to the man, she asked him if he had any regrets. When he said yes, he, she told him to just to to come with her. That she knew somebody who could help, and I'm guessing it was to to lure him to that nightshade yeah i i don't know if we should go there straight away i feel like that might be a trap yes. yeah that's kind kind of what i thought i mean it seemed very odd and My... I, I take it i wasn't the only one who's seen something that strange yeah i i don't know i don't trust nightshade because turned Gareth into a wand and I don't trust her little gremlin kiddos as far as I can throw them which I can't throw them very far I'm a goblin um, uh, um, who's Nightshade and uh, who's Gareth uh, Gumption looks at you Rhiannon to say like do you want to explain I'm going to look at him, and I'm going to kneel down to him, and I'm going to say, Are you sure you want me to be the one to explain about your master there? Because I can't lie. Okay. He, <laughs> Gumption is just kind of standing there with his mouth open a little bit, and he kind of shrinks his neck back into like his collar a little bit, and he goes, Anyways, um, Nightshade is a hag who uh, has captured my master and turned him to into a wand. And she's a bad lady with bad kids who does bad things. And we should not go to her first. We need to find out why she's doing what she's doing. What the heck's happening in Prismere. And we have to find a way to get in. Are you feeling bad for this little goblin? Every time he shrinks back, I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I think, uh, I believe he just keeps getting tinier. <laughs> I'm like, 
He's By gonna time... end up dead dead size. What are you talking about? Nobody is my size. They're gonna be smaller than dead Ted. <laughs> Oh man, so I'm gonna kind of, again, I'm gonna sigh, and I'm gonna kind of like rub his back a little bit, just kind of like trying to be like, I'm not trying to freak you out or anything, basically. Um, and I'm gonna say the, the, that, uh, I guess man who was, who was turned into the one was also the man who had cursed me, right? So the hope, at least on my end, is that I can be free of the curse once I once I free him. At least I'm I'm hoping that's the case. Mm-hmm. It should. However, be. it seems that this is much bigger than that. So it kind of takes a it takes a backseat in priority because. You said your friend is in trouble, yeah? Mm. Mine? Yeah, Zabilna, you said? Yeah. She is in trouble and she is my friend. Mm-hmm. Who is Zabilna? Then <laughs> just staring at you. I'm sorry, I'm not I familiar. Zabilna is the temporary ruler of Prismire. She took over for Gareth for a while, and Gareth hasn't been home in some times because he's a wand right now, so I guess she took over. Hmm, I see. So, it seems that maybe we should it seems that we have many priorities to fill out then. All right. So how did you, how do you how did you come to know Sibilna? They kind of seem as as a, a little bit of a big deal, Dendon. Oh. Yeah. Well, see, we've been friends, and we've been friends, and she's my friend. You know. I don't know. You live in her mm. garden. <laughs> like, n- yes. not even joking. That, like, sh- Denden is a is a garden fairy. No, yes, I am, I am aware, but uh, I gotta check if... We're here in the, the Denden version of things. Apparent... Uh, listen, Carl. According to what I have written down, all that Denden remembers is that, that their friends I build that needs help. Which all right, then give me a wisdom saving throw. All right, hang on. With advantage, because you've got multiple people who know who the fuck you're talking about here. Thank you. So they're Thank they're helping you. jog your memory. Yay! I keep saying I just have to write a lightning roll again. <laughs> okay. Um. What 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 did you say? Wisdom. Wisdom saving throw. Okay, wisdom saving throw. Okay, that's a sixteen. Sixteen. You remember living somewhere in her palace. You you remember a lot of greenery. You remember ble- being outside a lot of the time, but you weren't restricted from being inside. But that was where you lived. But you did spend a lot of time inside to helping out and hanging out with her. Mm-hmm. Um, I relay this to my okay. dear friend, Rhiannon. I see. Well, all right. Either way, it seems that this person is important to you, regardless of their stature. I think it makes sense to help. Yes, please. Of course. And I'm gonna, like, give Denden a little thumbs up. And I'm gonna say, so, Gumption. Yeah? Are you sure that he'll actually remove the curse on me? Or is that just something you're saying to me? 
to get me to cooperate. Do you want the complete and utter truth? Yes, that's all I can handle. Okay, he will. Because if you help him, he's obligated to do something in return. That's how the fake culture see. works. So, you saving him from a position where he totally does not want to be in. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure being a wand isn't any better than being a clown. But, if you rescue him from that, he'll be obligated to do something pretty much in that wheelhouse in return. And to me, giving you something in return like that, undoing a curse, if that's what he did to you, which I wouldn't, I don't know why he'd curse you. Um, you know, mm. he, he'd, he'd help. Uh, Denen will fly over to um, Gumption and just say, my current running theory is that they had a bad breakup. Excuse me, you'd have to be together first. Uh, uh -huh. G Gumption's gonna like tilt his head a little bit and say, "You guys weren't together." Well, no, he just kind of showed up. Really? He and then he was he showed up and and asked me if I would go with him, and I said no. So then he cursed me to not be able to lie. Huh. Well, that's rude. You know what? what? I support you fully, Rhiannon. That's fucking weird-ass behavior. Yeah, that is... that is strange. Um... Anyways... I... We'll, we'll get you to him, and then you can yell at him, and he'll uncurse you, and then... You can... Punch him or whatever, and then you can leave. Excuse me, but what have your bad breaks up been like? Bad breakups been like? Punching people? I don't exactly want to punch him. <laughs> but I do want to give him a little piece of my mind. And, I mean, doing that had really... It, it made some things really hard. Ah, uh, I just realized that the entire time we were talking, these strange night shades are still wandering around. Hmm... Very true. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more at a different time. Um, I, I got plenty of stories about good old Garrett that I'm sure if he was here for, he would electrocute me on the spot. Um, <laughs> but we got better things to do. Um, hey, Gumption? Yes? I think you'd do a better job as a clown than you. What does that mean? <laughs> I anyway. Yeah. Anyways, I <laughs> Gumption oh. Gumption like kind of shakes his head and he starts blocking off. Somebody, all of you guys, give give me a perception check. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> I got a ten. Uh, the curse continues. Um, hang on. Perception. I got an oh, 11. Oh boy. That's a 5. <laughs> I'm like enthralled by the cupcakes. I got like 5 of them. We're yeah. Seniors, guys. yeah. You know what's really funny is this entire time where they're just like, man, Zabilna, I wonder what has happened to her. Like, Sil Silvis knows firsthand, like, oh yeah, she's like frozen in time right now and hasn't said anything <laughs> about it. Yeah. I'm just like enjoying the show. <laughs> Yeah, Man. I've been waiting. <laughs> like I could say something. Then or say so. In these delicious cupcakes. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, with that, um, you guys, uh, as you guys walk near the gate, um, you guys are going to see. Hold on. In in the. Uh, NPC descriptions. Mm -hmm. This fellow, this little lady here. Oh boy. Uh, 
for the little frog. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, you guys have heard music as you've been eating and talking, but really haven't paid attention to where it's been coming from. And you see this little gnome uh, sitting on, on the rock wall with a little frog playing her lute. Uh, you get the sense that she's been like watching and like observing you guys while playing, kind of looking over at other people coming and going, smiling, talking to them. Um, and yeah, so she's there. Okay. Can I hang on. I have a <laughs> technical question. Um, oops, ignore that. Hang on. I need to read something real quick. Um, no. What are you looking um, for? Can I? Sorry. Um, could I use? Minor illusion to make some fireworks appear around her. Denim's literally just like, okay, good mood. I'm gonna make everyone have a good mood. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, 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 you can. Good time. Yeah, you can use a uh, minor illusion to make some like dazzling lights around her as she performs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you do that, and like. She notices for a second, she sees the lights, and she starts, like, singing and playing more, and other people sitting and eating kind of point at her, and she nods, and she's like, yeah, so people are people are enjoying themselves, and she's very happy that you, you did that for her. Yes. Also now, Fenden's mood increases by one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fenden's mood. <laughs> right. Um... Yes, you guys take charge. Take charge. Yes, I will be sitting on your shoulder, Rianon. I'm shoving the responsibility to you, towards you. What am I even supposed what? to do? You know, what we have like, to cheer people up and nah. get rid of nightshades who are not cheering people up. Nah. As okay. as you guys walk past the gate and past um this gnome. Uh, she looks over her shoulder and says, I hope you guys enjoyed the tickets. I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to walk over to her. Yeah. And I'm going to say, Wait, were you the one who gave us the tickets? Yeah. Any boy, any, yes. She giggles at Dun dun. <laughs> um, and she goes, Yes, I was. Um, my name's Ellie Wick. Oh, Ellie it's Wick. very nice to meet, meet you, Ellie Wick. Uh, may I ask, though, why did you decide to, I suppose, be so generous? I, I do things to set certain events in motion. Um, mm. let's just say a friend of mine called upon a favor, and I aimed to see it through. But now that you guys are here, and you are together, like, nodding her head towards the entire group now, it seems mm. like things are playing out the way they're supposed to. So. Ah. I see. My job is done. Are you some sort of... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, are are you some sort of oracle? Somewhat, yeah. You could say that. Hmm. I see. But I prefer bard. <laughs> well, that is very fair. And it seems you're rather good at playing. Thank you. <laughs> As I like, kind of point to her instrument. Uh, and, and I'm like <laughs> not being too good with words right now. Uh, but uh, Rhiannon is going to say again. I have to thank you for your kindness in in providing the tickets. It it has been really nice. <laughs> of course. Now I do have one last favor to ask of you. 
Sure. Um, from what I know, you guys will be going up against the Hourglass Coven, and I, for one, can't stand them. So, if you're going to take them on to free up um, the Feywild again, um, my advice is to pit them against each other. Those sisters, they're batty as all hell, and just basically make their lives miserable. They, they deserve it. You'll see once you get there. Things aren't very Ooh. good there right now, but with how you guys have been improving this carnival, I, I believe that you guys can basically save Brismire. Well, that's a lot to put on somebody's shoulders. However, I am always willing to help, and I'm sure with the current state of things, my friends would be willing to help as well. And believe me when I say that's all that is needed to save Prismire. Um, um, yes? Uh, are you... Are you Tasha? I... No, I'm not Tasha. Oh, man. Oh, my you. goodness. <laughs> would have been fun, though. Yeah, that would have been fun. Ask. No. You never know who could be Tasha in these I, days. Yeah. I, um, I do dislike being controlled. Thank you. Yeah, I controlling people is not in my repertoire. I don't, I don't care for that. Once again, if you have a problem with people controlling people, go after those hacks. Okay, can I pet your frog? Thank yes, you. you can. Thank you. She's gone. Oh, I want you as well. Yeah, go for it. And she'll, yeah, she'll kind of like kick out her leg a little bit so you can like pet his little head. That's adorable. Yeah. Little friend. His name is uh, Loot String. Aww. Aww. I'm going to give you a little kiss here on the forehead. Aww. You're so good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Of course. Well, you guys have a, a long road ahead of you, and I've got other planes to pop into. So, ah. yeah. The, uh... Any tips on getting rid of nightshades? Oh, you mean those? As they said. Yeah, just, you know. Put them against each other. Yeah. Ah. Uh, if you're talking about their, their little thieves that run around the carnival, there's not really a whole lot you can do about them. Um, they don't prey on people with tickets. They, they only prey upon people who are in here without a ticket. So, mm. if you go to a staff member and say, hey, there's a thief going after people without tickets, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light are just going to laugh at you. I see what happened now. Mm. Yeah. So, when it comes to those thieves, I would just be mindful of where you've got things, but don't worry too much because they're not allowed to take from you as long as you have tickets. I see. All right. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good luck, you all. Yes. Thank you. Have fun. Yeah. Hope to see you all okay. in the future. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I'm not. T I'm. I'm talking out of character. Um, guys, look at the the full twenty. Like the the happiness meter. Look at it. Ah, cute. Den Den, you pushed it to an 11. Oh my god. I Okay, sure. Yes. With your with your little light yes. show. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god. I think god. we all did it together. Yeah, you guys all oh, contributed. Definitely. I just mean you were like the last person to have done something. So. Yeah. Den Den uh, wins. Den Den wins. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Man. I'm the best at joy. Den Den <laughs> is the the freaking witch light monarch. <laughs> so, <laughs> um uh all right. So I do so far with everything I've heard about those two, which is not a lot, because you've been really quiet. Uh I do dislike 
Mr. What were their names? Mr. Mr. Witch, Witch and Mr. Mr. Light. Yes. Um. Yes. Okay. Nice. So, I'm guessing that our next thing is to possibly just go and like use our tickets to enjoy some of the other stuff, yeah? I guess. Yeah. I'm not even sure how many tickets I have left, if I'm going to be honest. Hang on. Uh, how many punches do we have left, the end? Uh, I don't know. I was hoping that you guys would keep count of your individual tickets. Well, let All me right. see. So we, went to, we went to Pixie Kingdom. That was yeah. one. And then I went to the Hall of Illusions. So that's so one on yours. we should all only have... And then it's one on each person, because each person went to one thing, except for Denden, Den, I think. I yeah, Denden Den didn't get there uh, to get punched. So we each, nice. so me and yeah. me and Silvis have two t two punches in our tickets, and Denden Den only has one. Uh, so we got plenty, I think. How many are you supposed to have? I'm gonna write it down. On uh, you you can get your ticket punched eight times. Uh, oh I damn. See, we good. We we need to go look at other stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, as you guys walk out of this gate, you hear bong, bong. Oh my god! The big top extravaganza is on. Make your way there now. Well, well, never mind. We'll use our ticket All right, yeah. let's go. I'm gonna hold Gumption's little hand. I'll Aww. be like, come on, you're coming with. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course I am. I'll be I'll be sitting on uh Kettlestein's head except uh instead of Brianna's shoulder for a change. Aw. It's Can, probably nice and feathery. Kettlestein, I, I cannot stress this enough, is very happy to have friends. I really I just enjoy him so much. <laughs> yeah. So He's you guys so nice. Yeah. You guys make your way down and into uh, the big top. The highlights oh. and a... Yeah? Oh, no, I'll go on. You're fine. Okay. The lights dim and a hush falls over the crowd. A second later, a spotlight illuminates a lithe elven figure uh, sitting in a silver loop, suspended above the center ring by silk ropes. An elf wears the elf wears a dazzling suit of diamond paned mirrors and a pair of butterfly wings. His scepter is topped with a spinning uh, vane. Welcome, one and all, to this evening's extravaganza. I am Mr. Light. Prepare to be delighted. And he kind of waves his wand over the crowd, and you guys watch as this golden like shimmer of sparks kind of fades over everybody and basically over the course of an hour like the the following events occur right um a burly the bugbear performs feats of strength lifting and throwing and carrying very heavy things in uh in ways that most people could never um, and in fact, at one point, he walks over to one of the long benches that a lot of people are sitting on. And he, with one hand, he lifts it up with all the, the people laughing and cheering as they're lifted up into the air. And as he drops them carefully back onto the, the ground. Um, uh, uh, the mermaid that you guys assisted earlier uh serenades the audience uh from a clam shell bathing pool um next to her candle foot the mime plays silent games with audience members um and fairy dragons with bright streamers tied to their tails perform dazzling acts of synchronized flying as a trope of acrobats clowns and fire breathers prayed about so you guys just get to watch this for a while. That's pretty neat. I'll be cheering on everything so hard, and I'll be so excitable, and everything is so fun. Woo! 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And as things kind of uh, come down to like a roar, is like various performers are kind of like moving away from the center. Uh, the uh, Mr. Light kind of descends on the silver hoop again from the ceiling. And he goes, My, my, wasn't that a show? Now, this is tradition around here. So I would like to ask if any of you lovely, lovely people would come up and perhaps perform an act of your own. Uh oh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no I knew you were going to do that to me. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. Do you, do you get shoved out there? <laughs> Somehow I get shoved out there, like, cause it, I think it's just funny. Okay, you you get kind of shoved out there, and you kind of like step on and over one of the benches, and in basically in front of everybody. And Mister Witch kind of sees you and goes, "Oh, I see." <laughs> and he kind of like as the loop kind of bends down, he kind of rolls forward and like catches his leg on the hoop and kind of spins around before descending. And landing in front of you. Mr. Light is a very, very tall man. I, he, he is... He the worst vibes, not gonna lie. He, like, he has <laughs> rotten vibes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, he, he kind of sees you, and he bends in close to you with kind of his rod, and he bows and says, What is your name? Uh, my... My name is Rhiannon. Rhiannon. What a lovely name. And he kind of, he, yeah? As, as she says her name, can I use Druidcraft to make a flower bloom in her hair? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh my god. What yeah, kind so... of flower is it? Um, it's, uh, it's a sword lily. Aw. Yeah. Uh, so he so once again he says how lovely and he notices the flower blue and he goes oh and he, he kind of stands back up to full height and kind of like stands on one leg and kind of spins a minute to the to the crowd with his scepter kind of in this big wide arc like this ladies and gentlemen is a lovely lady named Rhiannon Rhiannon oh my god the stage is yours. Perform as you'd like. Give us a good show. And he kind of takes a step away from me. What do you right. do? Okay. I actually was thinking about this as you were talking. Thank God. Um, she is talented with a sling. And she also has a spell or a cantrip called Magic Stone. So I'm going to have her just just pick up some pebbles, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe she already has some in her pocket. She's going to cast Magic Stone. Mm -hmm. um, and can I flavor it as, like, the stones kind of uh, glow with the, this sort of, like, rubyish uh, light? Absolutely. They almost look like they turned into rubies, right? Yeah. And um. then... Can yeah. then then try to be a hype man and like start cheering and stuff. Absolutely. And like ooh, then ah. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and I'm gonna say, uh, I bet any one of you that I could get a like. I'm sorry. I'm trying to word this in out of character. I'm trying to word this. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically. And she's basically going to say, I bet any one of you that I can hit a target from any distance with this sling and these pebbles. Uh, oh with that, Mr. Light goes, a marksman! Lovely! Well, is anybody going to take her up on that bet? I'll even help her with a wager. Three tickets, if you can throw something, and she misses. 
Oh my god. Okay. Oh, this is kind All of All right. Funny. So, uh, kind of a, a one of the like a, a guy from on like the kind of higher seat stands up and he goes, he goes, I gotta like he he holds up like um like basically what's something that he should throw. Basically, like a crumbled like um, food bag, right? Okay. And he's like, "Like I got this. I'm. I can throw it." And. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and he goes and he points at Mister Light and goes, "I'd like those tickets, sir." And Mister Light is like, "Well, you have to throw the item first, sir." <laughs> a bet's a bet. A deal's a deal. You know how it is. The guy shrugs and goes, "All right," and he chucks it. Okay. How Can do I you roll? You don't even have to roll. How do you hit this thing? I don't know. Nice. Okay, so basically, she's gonna kind of whip the sling back and spin it a bit before she kind of like throws it forward and lets go of one end, and you can see the pebble just kind of shoot forth with this like the ruby light trail right behind it and it hits it like smack dab in the middle nice so you... uh, once again if i can uh i will make, use minor illusion to make some fireworks appear. Please. right on so the, the crowd so watches much. as this like streak of light happens and then it hits this little ball of waste and explodes in some light wow. and the crowd goes fucking nuts and mr light is loving it he thinks this is awesome. So he goes, like, that was incredible. How about we... Rhiannon's kind of getting a little bit more of an ego boost right now. Not yeah. gonna lie. And Yay! he goes, he goes, I think we can offer you a couple more targets, can't we? And oh, he, he gestures over to the other performers who they basically, um, a couple clowns kind of do some cartwheels and whatnot out onto the ground uh, behind you and kind of a, a good distance away. And they put, one of them puts a pumpkin on their head, one puts a, uh, like, a pie, and the last one puts an apple. I see. And they, rather than staying still, they're all kind of doing, like, goofy dances while they have these items on their heads. Oh, these guys are not I'm... organized, I can just tell. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm feeling kind of confident, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say... How about you replace the pumpkin in it with a cherry? I bet you I can hit it. <laughs> M Mr. Light is going to fucking laugh with kind of this like, oh, like very just over the top and goes, I love your style, lady. Somebody, anybody in the crowd has a, have a cherry and some lady in the back is like, oh, I've got one. Like, I've got one on my food here. And like, uh, another clown like runs up and like takes it from her and they run up with the pumpkin um and the guy like w the clown holding the pumpkin takes it off his head and after the the clown that puts the cherry on the other clown's head um the clown holding the pumpkin like slams the pumpkin over the head of the other clown who now is like doing a goofy dance and walk away now that his head is stuck in a pumpkin everybody's laughing and whatnot um and um yeah so mr light kind of does another spur like spin around and he points at the clowns and it's like all right fire away okay do i have to roll for these ones i'm gonna save the cherry one for last because i think that would be the most impressive right um no you, you don't have to roll for any of these Damn. okay so it's it's so... really just how do you how do you want to flavor each one so, okay, so for the the pie, right? Yes. Um, how is it sitting on this guy's head, by the way? Like, does he somehow have it on its side somehow, or is it like... Nope, it, it's, it's flat. Okay, I would like, to, I'm, again, I'm, I'm feeling rather confident. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put several of these, of these glowing, like pebbles into my sling right mm -hmm. and like 
since I have magic stone on them, and I this is more for flavor than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Can I have it so it kind of forms a specific like shape? Yeah, go for it. Okay, because I would love it if, like, basically, uh. Okay, so basically, she takes that uh. She kind she kind of uh. I'm trying to figure out the pie one because that one's getting to me. I'm not gonna lie, especially if it's not on its side somehow. Um. DM. Yes. Can we say they're balancing it on its side? Uh, sure. What happens is, like, every now and then, they'll kind of, like, bob their head, and it'll, like, flip, and then it's on its side for a moment, and then they'll buck backwards, and it's back on its side. So you have to, like... Oh, so, like, it flips a little yeah. bit? So yeah. there's, like, a timing thing. Okay, perfect. Mm. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna take... I'm going to take a few pebbles, put them in there, and then I'm going to whip it at it. You see the stream of light go forth, and it's in the freaking shape of a star. And it oh. cuts out this sort of, like, star-shaped hole in the in the pie. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Does it, does it like, blow up afterwards, too? The pie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So people watch as it takes this shape, and everyone's like, oh, wow. And it goes... And like pie goes everywhere behind the the clown, um, and people start like clapping again. Like okay, yeah. I hang on. I believe mm -hmm. I can use. Uh, oh my god! Minor... You get a height. I believe I can use minor <laughs> illusion to like make a drum roll. Oh my god! Yeah, go for it. I'm just forming yes, drum rolls for every that. freaking thing. Oh, I love it. You're freaking hyping it up so much. <laughs> and so, and then for the next one, for the apple, I have it in the shape of, of a heart. So it's like the same principle, but you see as like when it flips, it also cores the apple. <laughs> That's cool. Yes. That's right? cool. Yeah. And once again, what, and... like after people, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. After people watch that you've hit it in a certain pattern and it's glowing, once it goes, pah, and it like like shatters outwards in this like this like blast of like red lights and whatnot, and every once again everyone loses their mind. Like there, it's really wow. cool. Oh, so romantic! Wow, wow. incredible! Could you yeah. Oh, can I say it happened like right in front of the the couple that? got that they just became fiance. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they're there. And I'm going to give them a wink. Oh. <laughs> they they wave at you. I have to put all my, like my freaking all into the showmanship now. Yeah. Uh and then for the very last one for the cherry, I'm only going to put in a single pebble. No no funky shapes, no nothing. And Oh. Well, as you're I'm doing this, the 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 lights kind of go down a little bit, like it's getting a little darker in here, like it's all dramatic. The crowd kind of goes to like a hush. Den Den's okay. doing the the, the drumming. <laughs> Drumble. Uh, and I'm going to just send out this single pebble, and it's going to literally hit the cherry. Oh. <laughs> Nice. And the cherry is gonna be even mostly intact. It's just the freaking pit of the cherry goes flying. Nice. As as she hits, I would like to once more um do some fireworks and uh let some flowers bloom in her hair. Nice. <laughs> you do that. You and the best hype the... hype man ever did. <laughs> And now that that has happened, the crowd is going fucking nuts. Mr. Light is so, so happy. You, like, <laughs> this man is absolutely delighted by your showmanship. Um, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. give a gracious bow to the crowd. 
And as yeah. you bow, I will use fairy fire to make you glow. Aww. Oh. oh my gosh. Uh, and I'm gonna take, because I'm assuming the cherry stayed, right? Yeah. And I'm going to take. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna kind of toss it back to the woman, and I'll be like, "Careful not to, not to choke on those pits, lady." And I'm a weak. Ah, uh, the the crowd will laugh and clap, and they're <laughs> they're all about it. Um, oh my gosh. Mi Mr. Light is going to, like, clap with, like, his scepter, and he's going to, like, kind of, like, lean down to you a little bit and say, Are you employed, Mr. Rhiannon? Uh, did you say Mr. <laughs> I said, no, I said Mrs. Oh, I, I will say, uh, no, why? Well, I think you might have a future here at the carnival if you'd like it. You know what? I will think about it. I do appreciate the offer, though. Hmm. And he'll kind of, like, smile at that. And, like, he's going to kind of lean in closer to you and say, After the monarch has been crowned, find, uh, find, uh, Mr. Witch and me uh, in the staff area. We might have to discuss that. All right, it's that sounds great. Of and I'm gonna so. give him like a very big smile, and I'm gonna wave to the crowd and blow out kisses and everything. Yeah, Silvis. <laughs> yeah. Do you want <laughs> to step out from the crowd? Uh, yeah. Silvis will step out <laughs> from the crowd next. <laughs> see Mi what I've got to help. Mi Mr. Light will see. Silva's kind of walk out from the crowd and kind of tilt their head and go, I, excuse me, uh, what do you, do you have, do you wish to perform as well? Uh, yeah. I, I'm surprised. I didn't even request another performer, but since you're so willing, and I'm such an, in such a good mood, I will let you perform. What is your name? Right. My name is Silvus Fefire. Fefire, what a last name. And like Mr. Light will stand up and say, This is the magnificent Fefire. The, sh the floor is yours. And they'll kind of gesture outwards with their, um, their scepter. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. So yes, I'm going to stand there, pull out three potions, and at first they just start juggling them. All right. People, people, after the last performance, people are kind of just like, yeah. oh, okay, it's a juggling act. All right, that's cute. Not, not as creative yet. Oh, let's uh, go, let's go. In between juggling the three bottles, they add two more. Okay. <laughs> you, you're you now juggling quite a few bottles of, of very shiny liquids. Ooh. And then, one after the other, they throw the bottles in the air. And then, they take their hand crossbow. And with, it's almost an instant, they fire, hit all five bottles, and they explode into a series of lights and colors. Nice. So you, so you have, like, you, like, toss them all up in the air in this, like, this kind of, yeah. like, Single arc. Arrow. This, yeah, this arc. And you shoot your, you aim your crossbow and you pop it and it goes, and it goes, crack, 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 crack. <laughs> And this, like, a, like almost like a rainbow of, of lights and colors and, and whatnot. And the crowd fucking loses it. That was really cool. Yay! <laughs> wow! Fae Fyra! Woo! Yeah, Freaking. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> they then grab another bottle. And this one has 
a green bubbling liquid. And they face the audience and they present the bottle. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is acid. The, the crowd goes, ooh. They're, they're wondering what you're doing with the That's bottle of acid. Throws the bottle into the air. Mm -hmm. And they use their tail. And kind of, it's hard to describe it, but they manage to use their tail to throw their hand axe up. And it grazes the bottle ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like thinking. Take your time. Exactly what's happening. It grazes it, grazes it ever so slightly. And they both begin to fall back down. And Silvis takes the crossbow, shoots it. First, they take like a few steps back, shoots the axe, which is falling beside the acid. Mm -hmm. uh, and they shoot the axe just right that it hits like the cork of the bottle. Right. Um. And kind of removes it, which causes the bottle to start spinning the acid inside. So it's now open. Mm -hmm. uh, and Silvis kind of does a roll to get back into position. And it looks like they almost overshot it. And then yep. tail catches the bottle. Oh, without spilling a drop of acid. Yeah, not a drop. Once again, the crowd fucking loses it. Can I, can, okay, if, if we're freaking use it, can I use Eldritch Blast to just, just to, for like aesthetic purposes to like create this like cocoon of like, like almost lightning y light just kind of going off, you know? Yeah, you yeah. can. In response to this, oh, yeah. for confetti. Yeah, the yeah. yeah the the audience has yet to change their reaction from fucking going nuts. That was cool. Um, <laughs> Mister Light once again is fucking ecstatic, and he is like like kind of spinning around, clapping his hands, laughing, and goes, "Another marksman." Would you two happen to know each other? Uh, we do. Uh, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, I sh I shouldn't be surprised yet I am. Well, well, you know the offer that I gave you, Rhiannon, and you can tell your friend here, uh, Madame Fafira, that the same offer goes to them. As I said, after the crowning of the witch-like monarch, come find me and Mister Witch in the staff area. Um. Tell uh, tell Burley, uh, we sent you. How about that? Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, Denden, Den, did you want to perform too? Oh dear God, no. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna add real quick uh, after they finish talking to Silva. Silva is like, "Well, a great show needs a great exit," and they pull a bottle that has. It looks like electricity is within the bottle itself, and they throw it at the ground and basically like smug bomb flashbang, and they're gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mr. Light is gonna laugh and he's gonna turn to the crowd, like, Can you fucking believe? Like, he doesn't say that, but he's like, Can you believe that? That was incredible. <laughs> like, just yeah. laugh, like yeah. everyone's going nuts, and and he's gonna kind of like, like basically like wave it at Rihanna as you kind of make your way back into the crowd um people are kind of laughing and like like basically like saying like good job out there you know um Ooh. mr light will kind of spin around and move back towards the big silver hoop that he descended on he'll kind of like spin himself back on it 
and as it goes up, he'll say, And that'll be it for the big topic extravaganza. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. Um, do stick around for a few hours. The crowning of the Witch Lake Monarch will happen at the end of this night, and it could be any of you. Have a lovely afternoon. Oh. And the light that was on him, like, shuts off for a moment, and then once it turns back on, he's gone. And then we oh. move the orders. Yeah. Uh, Silvis, where where did you go? I I just <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> I kind of like you're just sitting under the like the seats. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say I'm hiding under the seats under Den Den. I'm just like Den Den. Yes. Then I'm down here. Okay. Yes, I. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's two thumbs up. Like yeah. You did yeah. amazing. Yeah. I did. Yeah. That was yeah. super wrecking. I'm shaking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Man, that was incredible. Oh so. I'm a. Yeah. Like. I'm not gonna lie, like, I'm kind of wondering what our two NPCs thought of all of that. Yes! Oh, they were they were laughing and, and clapping as well. They thought that was incredible. Aww. Yes? Yeah. They were, they were part even of that. Even Gumption? Yeah, even Gumption. He's never seen anything quite like that. That was cool. Aww. Yes, Gareth is truly missing out. Fucking loser. Yeah, what a dick. <laughs> what an absolute jerk. Yep. So, uh, with that, you guys can kind of collect. Those of you who performed as you guys are exiting the big top, um, you get kind of hounded by people asking questions like, like, oh, you know, are you going to work here? You know, like, like, hey, can I get your autograph? Because they think that you're going to work here. Aww. Like, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, oh yeah. But, um, Gosh, we're actually forming reputation. Though. That's what, damn, we're forming reputation. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, as you guys kind of step out of the big top and people start leaving you alone and you guys kind of get back out there, you hear another bong as the shot, the sky above you shifts ever so slightly, revealing new mm -hmm. stars. Time has passed by an hour. And that oh. is where oh. we're going to end this session. No! I think <laughs> Oh, that was so cool, though. I oh, my gosh. I also love how we're both sharpshooters, but it's vastly, like, different things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? That was so cool. I wish I could have seen that in real life. Yeah. I was, like, thinking in my head, like, okay. Oop, I'll be what back. What did do? I'll be right back. Uh, one, potions. Two, they have a crossbow. They have excellent dexterity. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is this is what's happening. I was thinking maybe type rope, but I forgot. <laughs> I'm That's glad okay. you sent Silvis out there after all. Mine uses a lot of experience when it comes to using the sling and everything. Yeah. And I honestly think they probably would have found a way to like make shapes and whatever by the the like the difference in how they wield the, their sling and how many pebbles and it what range of velocity will it be like when it finally hits the right point that they can whip it and it'll do the correct shape like basically it's a lot of practice you know yeah. I agree. but i'm like oh my god yours was the freaking you you freaking just like flipped up that the axe with your tail and we're yeah, like that was really cool. and then you and then you offset that with the crossbow to like so it could uncork the the bottle like that was crazy. Yeah, but I thought uh, yeah, the thing was... with the pie was also super fun. And the <laughs> the heart and the apple, that was just adorable. Come on. I, I was like, oh man, I wanted to do that in front of the, the, like, the if... couple that we helped. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a whole like it, like if we join the circus, you're like main act. <laughs> yeah, like, no. You're the you're the never you're like at the very end, big thing everyone goes to see. What? I feel yeah. like we'd probably be going at the same time since we're oh going that. Yeah, Oh my god, we could though. Because I got yeah. the potions, I can make anything in them. 
Like, I'm and sure Carl would totally allow me to, like, make potions where you break them and then there's, like, an illusion that yeah, comes out. Yeah, oh, my God. Oh, you could, like, drench the stones in certain stuff or something to, like, have oh, yeah. a special effect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Handmade oh, my magic. Gosh. <laughs> At some point, you and I were freaking shooting these little, like, really small potions that create these color smoke bombs or something. Yeah. I When I was kind thinking of, rain of, like... color down on the crowd. Yeah. Oh, and you know, we also got the fucking lightning in a bottle exit strategy. And then we just that's always we both leave and be be under the seats. That's a pop song. <laughs> what is a pop song? Don't oh. you know it? It's like it's that cheesy ass pop song. It's like, baby, you're like lightning in a bottle. It's terrible. I can't believe that. I hate it. Ah, oh, jeez. God, that I lightning do. thing is like. A real spell I have too. Well, not spell. I potion, I wish I hope. Oh, thank God, this gets recorded. <laughs> I was just yeah. about to be like, I wish I could write this down somewhere so I could draw it later. And it like, gets recorded. It's I, I, I just wish I had the I the acid part more like smoothly in my head because I can see it in motion. Yeah. Of presenting the bottle, uh, throwing in the air, axe via tail. Rolling backwards, shooting axe, rolling back forward, catching. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you like? Oh my god! Could you imagine yourself to present that perfectly? Yeah. <laughs> could you imagine Which... if you and I, at some point, like, if if for some reason we were working here, at some point we like, freaking, freaking, were like shooting at each other, but we'd like. Uh, my pebble would hit your arrow or whatever, that kind of thing. Oh my god. Because we're so <laughs> sharp at shooting. So, you know? <laughs> I, I'm thinking of, like, what would happen because, like, if they're at approximately the same speed. I don't know. Because you have a, a rock. You're shooting a rock at a sharp point. Yeah, though I, though I also cast something that makes it a little stronger um, than just a regular rock, right? Yeah. So... I mean, we could have it where it like hits the tip the of one of the arrows. The breaks the frickin- arrow. Yeah, and it splits it. And then, what if at some point we do that because we know that like it'll go in two different directions. It then it hits two freaking like targets either side of me. <sighs> yes. You could. Why, are, why did we not do this? <laughs> Use flintstone and cover it. Cover the stone in. I'm could, back. Like- <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's um, the thing. Like, Carl, I'm sorry, but we're abandoning the main quest. Rhiannon and the yeah. rest of us are working at this carnival now. Okay. Like, I'm gonna. I like. I mean, if I'm like part of the staff, I can like you could just go to the Feywild whenever. You know? Gotcha. That's true. <laughs> hey. Solved. Um. I. I. Yeah. I haven't ended the recording. Just so you guys know. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, okay. We've thought. just been talking about the game though. Like okay. we were talking about like if you were performing. Yeah. Like. like we, we have a sharp yeah. shooting like act together, and like at some point, <laughs> they they shoot an arrow right at me, and it's like per because they know that I'll shoot a pebble right back at it, and it will split the arrow and hit two targets on either side or whatever. That that'd like, be the fucking same cool. Could be said if like yeah. the same could be said if I threw like a particularly like hefty pebble at you, and you like just kind of pull out your axe and it freaking splits it. And just <laughs> I just, thing. Oh, I love that taking the axe and splitting it. Jesus. Let me hit you with this idea. I it, so that pebble's coming at me, axe yeah. in the tail. I do a spin. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, cut the pebble. I wish I could animate. <laughs> By the way, I, mm. my character has a donkey tail, and I'm using it as a prehensile tail. I love it. That's fun. All right. Adapt. So, I want to I want to close this out. Um, I hope the session <laughs> made up for the fact that we haven't been doing it as of late because holidays and also i've been sick so mm-hmm. like stuff st- stuff had gotten in the way but hopefully um two weeks from now because once again this is supposed to be every other thursday uh we'll be back for session three um okay. yeah Sweet. all right so that'll be it once again you can find uh the social media of everybody here uh and the um the information uh segment on this video um down below um does anyone else have anything that they 
want to plug that changed from last time? No. 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 I think we're good. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.